Good morning. Hello. Welcome to the usual Friday morning, approximately 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time in New York City episode live stream of The Coding Train. All aboard. We are leaving the station almost mostly on time today. And I hope that things are working. Oops, I'm, I'm trying to, sorry. I, uh, never, never, never again on this computer. Uh, okay, so please, if you are seeing me and things are working and I'm live streaming, let me know in the chat because I am keeping an eye on the chat. Now, as I like to do at the beginning at the, uh, of while people are getting sort of settled in with their nice warm cup of herbal tea and their pajamas with a blanket curled up on the couch, I like to get started with continuing our, oh, wait a sec. No, 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 everything was, I, I had set everything up and I was kind of on time. And now I believe, uh, hold on, just got to work something out here. Uh, what's going on here? Ah, audio is an issue. Hold on, everyone. I had momentum, I had rhythm, I had a whole thing I was doing. Uh, let me just check here. Um, why do I not hear? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, hold on. Let's see if this works. Are you guys hearing any audio? I mean, music. No, you're not. You're not. You're not. Oh, my soundboard is broken. <laughs> Can I have a mulligan? Can I do this again, please? Uh, I guess I will. Uh, what I'm going to do is disconnect. Uh, and then I am going to reconnect. <laughs> <laughs> Try this one more time. Do not pay attention to what's happening here. Uh, all right. Oh, I need a new, uh, forget about this. I need a new way of doing the whole sound thing. Let's just get going. Forget about my playing lullaby music and reading some random numbers. I'll just come back for that later. Let's actually get started with perhaps what you are here today to watch, which is some coding. Now, um, I, I am a bit more prepared than usual in that I have an agenda. Let me pull that up. Whoa, where did it go? Oh, everything's... Okay, so let me pull up my agenda right here. Uh, there we go, okay. Uh, here we go. So this is what's on the docket for today. So I have some uh, announcements to make about new things and scheduling. Uh, I have some tutorials and coding challenges that I would like to do. I have some other possible topics that I'd really like to do if I can get to it. Um, I'd always like to um, you know, answer, take a little bit of time to answer some questions from the chat and then also uh, <laughs> show a bit of projects that people have submitted from the community. So let me get started here with uh, a very exciting announcement <laughs> which is that the coding train store. <laughs> and I turned to like a salesperson. <laughs> look, uh, look, this is my usual yellow mug. But today, I also have this mug. <laughs> On Q, oh, I, I want to like, do you think I could get a job at QVC with this, uh, with what I'm doing here? But anyway, if you're interested, people have been asking. Uh, codingtrain.storeenv is the word, but storeenv spelled uh, with the E for both words. So store with an E and envy with an E, but only one E in storeenv. Uh, hopefully I got that right because it'll be embarrassing if I get it wrong. Uh, codingtrainstorenv.com. There it is. So if you're interested in, I'm not actually, I'm wearing my rogue NASA t-shirt, which is a great uh, t-shirt that all the proceeds go to. Um, uh, Girls Who Code and uh, some sort of math and science initiative from Cotton Bureau, which is a great t-shirt company. Um, but, so I should, but I did bring some of these shirts if you're interested. <laughs> you should get the Rogue NASA shirt. Uh, here's one example of one and uh, here's an example of another. Now I'm plugging this way too much, the, way more than I'm uh, at all comfortable <laughs> about. So uh, there's some shirts here, there's some hoodies. Um, this is sort of in progress and I'm going to add hopefully some other styles 
uh, and some, some kid sizes and that type of thing as well. Um, if you're interested in getting mugs, you've got to go down here to this link where it says Coding Train Mugs. So I'm having a little bit of a technical issue with Store Envy right now because the mugs and the t-shirts ship separately. So unfortunately, um, in order to charge for the shipping for each, um, right now they have to be in two separate stores. Okay. <laughs> That's all, I wanted to, that's all I wanted to mention. Hopefully it works for you. If you have any issues, um, uh, tweet me at Shiftman. I, think, I guess there's like a contact on here. What happens if I go there? Oh, I assume this message will go to me if you type a message in here with an issue. Uh, okay, so that's announcement number one. Announcement number two. I know you guys have been waiting for this. I've, this has probably been the most requested topic uh, since I started doing this channel. But I am planning, okay, hold on, there's a question. Does the rainbow on the logo lack the green color because of your chroma keying? That is exactly correct, Alon, in the chat. <laughs> this way I can actually wear it without being keyed out. Uh, so, I was saying something. Um, next week, hello Russia and Michigan. Next week, I will be beginning my machine learning Topic. I'm teaching a course here at IT, a program called ITP, which is part of Tisch School of the Arts, New York University. Uh, and the syllabus for that course, which I really need to work on, it actually doesn't start next week because next week is spring break for NYU. Um, which one am I looking for? Uh, if I can type this in. The syllabus for this course is here on this GitHub repository. If you happen to go to this GitHub repository right now, there's very, very little there. It's just sort of a skeleton of some topics I'm thinking about, and all of these topics I will make videos about in this uh, channel over the next, I would say, seven to eight weeks probably. Um, and so just to, I did this last week, but just to run through the topics again, um, some stuff about algorithms and search, uh, uh, network graphing stuff, some just kind of classic machine learning algorithms that have to do with classification and prediction tasks, uh, looking at basics of neural networks, looking at uh, genetic algorithms, which I already have a lot of material for, but I have some new ideas for some new possibilities. Uh, reinforcement learning, in particular as that relates to some of the steering behavior stuff that I've done previously, and then some other stuff too. So here's the thing. <laughs> you know how when I say quaternari qu quaternions, I have to run away, <laughs> even though I really do plan someday on trying to tackle what is a quaternion, why would you use it, how would you implement it, should you try to write the math from scratch, use a library. I'm interested in all these questions and I would like to tackle that on this channel. I said it and I didn't run away. It's going to get me. <laughs> I'm going to hide. So I kind of have a little bit of the same reaction to uh, machine learning. It's, uh, it's a little scary to me. Um, this is not a topic that I have a long um, history and expertise in. So I'm trying to experiment, which is to stretch myself a little bit on this channel. I figure it's a good thing if I'm a little uncomfortable with some of these topics, because then maybe if I can figure it out a little bit, it'll, it'll help you guys figure it out too. Um, but I, I, I'm going to certainly rely on help from the community a bit more. And I have some uh, wonderful people in my uh, patron group, uh, which is um, a Slack channel that you can subscribe to via uh, patreon.com slash coding train, who have been helping me. Um, and so this is, um, so we're going to see, but here's the thing, what I really want to keep, what I really want to keep a focus to, and I, I'm mostly talking about this to like remind myself, is that I don't want to get lost in the weeds of, of sort of theoretical uh, research behind in the, in the lower level guts of a lot of these machine learning topics. That's interesting, important, and vital research. But my, what I see that what, that what I'm going to do on this channel is, and I'm trying to find this line between let's actually write the code to make the algorithm and, 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 and use that in our application versus let's pull from a library or framework and make the application. So I'm going to kind of walk between those two things. For example, I think at this point I would like to build, um, whenever I get to week three, a basic perceptron, which is like the simplest neural network. It's like a neural network that isn't even a network because it just has one neuron. Um, and then look at how that's the basis for this idea of a multi-layered feed forward network. So build some basic examples of simple neural networks to understand how they work. What are the parameters of them? What are they doing? But to then at some point stop. Like for example, I don't know if looking at this, I mean I'm going to talk about what back, back propagation is, which I think is a very understandable concept, but I don't know how far I want to go into all of the math 
and implementation of that versus just kind of get build some basic examples and then you know maybe uh, use a, a framework something like TensorFlow to then kind of get the implementation because really what I want to focus on is how can you be creative how can you improve the world <laughs> with machine learning and and maybe the answer to that is maybe we should just slow down and give each other a hug <laughs> forget about this machine learning thing but um, but you know we can try we can give it a try. Uh, and so that's what I'm planning. And so next week, I think I will probably start here, although I, I need to take this afternoon and some of the weekend to kind of sleep on this and figure, figure some of this stuff out. So um, I would love any feedback, any help. If you have ideas for simple implementations and examples that can result in uh, creative outcomes, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Uh, great. Oh, also, I would love any of your, so I'm trying to decide next week, I'm going to be using a lot of my time to do some reading and watch some other courses, some things, uh, you know, I've, I watch a lot of videos on Sirajology, Siraj's YouTube channel. Um, there's a great co online course from a company called Cadenze, which is called, well, there's the Rebecca Friedbrink's course, which is a wonderful machine learning for artists, I think it's called. There's also a, a course on TensorFlow. Um, and um, what else? So anyway, so but I, I like to read books. <laughs> Even though I'm here making all, all I do is make these YouTube videos, I I learn best I think from actually being forced to read a book away from my computer. Um, and so if you have some suggestions for some good um, machine learning uh, texts that I might um, use as a foundation for some knowledge to build examples from, I am totally please tweet those things at me at Schiffman. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing next week. Uh, so that's that. Um, so let me see. Oh, is my audio a problem? Um, so I hear somebody in the chat says, um, maybe you should work on your audio. Is there an issue with my audio? Sometimes the way I place my microphone is in an awkward spot and then I turn my head or something and it, it cuts in and out. But, um, so let me know if that's a problem in particular in the, in the patron group, because I can see that a little bit more easily than the YouTube chat. I see people. It's, uh, why is my fractal spirographic code not on? Oh, did somebody? Uh, okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, I'd have to apologize um, that, okay, so let's take a look. I, I wanna get going here, but let, since this was asked in the chat, um, let's check, take a look. So I am trying to uh, keep up with, oh, I'm in the wrong repo. So this is my repository, coding train slash rainbow code. This is where I, uh, keep all the code from all these videos that I'm making. And then I have a new system, and let's go down, and let's look at um, under challenges, under uh, really far down. What am I gonna do when I get to challenge number 100, by the way? Uh, fractal Spirograph, I don't know which one. Let's look at this one. Um, and, then there, and then I have this thing where there are some community variations. I think I showed these last week. So I saw somebody in the chat saying, why have you, um, not accepted my pull request. So I don't know the answer to that. I do know the, I do know one thing, which is that I am a little bit overwhelmed with tweets, pull requests, <laughs> Facebook messages, email, YouTube comments. Like I haven't, I usually take at least, um, I usually try to take about a half an hour to an hour every day to respond to YouTube comments. And I actually haven't done that in like two or three days. So I'm like way behind. Um, so I'm trying to figure out systems for keeping up with this stuff, but I, I probably just missed this pull request. Um, I don't see which one it is. So I'm gonna have to look for this later. Um, uh, send, um, if you're in the chat and you posted about your pull request not being, uh, oh, but it's not, uh, oh, I see. You accept it, but it's not in your document. Okay, so um, how do I pick, so this is another thing. I don't, I don't, I'm learning, figuring out what makes sense to do this. How, ooh, uh, my phone is ringing. Look at this, I can, I can decline the call on my, Watch now. Okay, this is not an Apple Watch though. I know that I have a lot of Apple products in this room. Not this. <laughs> One place where it's not. Okay, um, I'm trying to figure out the, um, I don't have a system for picking projects that I show. Uh, and I think that I need to do a better job of figuring out uh, what would be an, a, a fair and exciting and interesting way of doing that. Right now it's completely haphazard. So. Except for one thing, I, I, I'm, I'm, 
I post a thread in my patron group and people uh, submit projects there. And then sometimes I pull something from Twitter, which is what this first one is. Because <laughs> I scroll through my Twitter feed and see a few like things that people have sent to me and then I sometimes pull those. So if you have ideas, and I'll think about ways to manage that better. I apologize that I don't have that particular project. I do, what I do like to do is um, then go back to the previous coding challenge and share some things that were that in that. And the, the fractal spirograph one is just a few weeks behind. Anyway, so I'm off, way off topic here. <laughs> Think about all that stuff later. Let's get going. How, how many minutes am I in here? 15 minutes. I have a rule, which is that I must start coding by at least 30 minutes. So let's see. I'm very disappointed that my... Um... Oh, that's promising. Hold on. Let's see here. I just got to check something. Okay, okay, okay. I think I know what the problem is. If everybody hold on for a second. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to just check something here. Oh, that's right. Okay, we'll give, this, uh, give this a restart. Okay. Um, all right, so let's see here. Let's look at the, um, let me press this again. Turn this on. Uh, come on. Okay. Let's, oh, I have a, a little bit of an announcement, by the way. This is like a small, tiny thing, but I'll, let me mention it. Uh, I have not, I have recorded so much content last Friday, and what I do is after a long live stream, I think I probably did almost four hours of live stream last Friday, and then all the edited versions get released. I release them once per day. Um, but um, uh, I had so much that I haven't actually released all of it. But, and let me just mention though, the main coding challenge I did at the end of last week was Plinko. Let me see if this shows up. I can't remember if this is added. One thing you can often do, You'll notice that this is, these are my most recent videos. Plinko is not there. When a video is ready, even before I release it on a schedule, since you guys are the core live viewers, you can go to uh, playlists, for example, and I'm gonna go to challenges. Uh, let's go to all playlists. Okay, no, hold on. Ah! Um, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to operate this YouTube thing. <laughs> I don't know how to find my, I don't know how to use it if I'm not logged into my account. Let me go to home. You know, playlist is the right place, clearly. Uh, oh, that's got to be down here somewhere. Coding challenges. And so this is the coding challenge playlist. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Look at this. It's actually there. So you should feel free to always check some of the playlists and you can see. And what I'll tell you about what's special about this. Now, you can just turn this off and go watch these if you didn't watch last week. But this, coding challenge 62.3. Plinko part three is actually a video that no one, well not no one, but almost no one has seen. Because I uh, discovered some things about the Plinko simulation that I felt, based on some suggestions from chat and Twitter or wherever it came from, um, that needed some improvement. And so I secretly came up in here and didn't live stream it and record it. I did actually do a test, uh, whatever. I. Um, uh, recorded an extra section of that, which changed a few things. So if you're if you watch the live stream um, and so don't feel like watching the edited versions, I would say make sure go ahead and watch 62.3. That's actually new content. The rest is just edited versions of what I did last week. Okay, so that's there. I'm going to release those over the weekend, later this afternoon, that type of thing. Okay, um, can you change ML to machine learning in your file? Sure. Oh yeah. Machine learning, yes. There we go. Okay, so, ah, work from the community. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I will just have to sing my lullabies myself. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so let's take a look first on this first one. This is from... Uh, See it, Carla on Twitter. Uh, I just wanted to show Emily Shia did a guest tutorial about making a matrix rain simulation and there have been a lot of wonderful uh, creative variations of it. Um, and this is one that I just saw this morning that has a uh, color and a sort of different set of characters in it. And um, uh, uh, I really enjoyed seeing this one look. And so then the other thing I'll mention is the, if you, if you go to this tweet, uh, you'll find the source code is here. 
So this is a great, uh, uh, this is one of the things that I love about do operating this YouTube channel, whether I make a tutorial or somebody else does, to see this sort of tree of ideas that percolate out from a, a single example. So thank you um, for uh, Carla for this wonderful uh, version of the Matrix Rain. Okay, now I'm going to show uh, some stuff from the, uh, oh, and I need to have, sorry, I need to have, uh, I don't have everything set the way that I meant to. Look at this. Oh my God, seriously, uh, hold on. <laughs> Everything's gonna be okay, everybody. Uh, this is from, I'm gonna start, I think I showed this before, but I didn't, um, I didn't kind of uh, get all the details out about it. So this is from, uh, I have notes here, Mr. Muse Addict, uh, and what it is is a, whoops, Trappist Visualization. What is a Trappist visualization? It's the newly discovered visualization of data around the newly discovered Trappist solar system. So I think when I showed this before, I didn't explore everything it could do. <laughs> and so I really used the mouse wheel to zoom. So that's the thing that I mostly missed. So let's find, oh, is there no link to it running? I gotta find the code here. Ah, okay, so, ah, so this, so I'm going to uh, paste this into processing again. And we're gonna look at this project. Okay, here we go. Let's run the mouse wheel. I don't have a mouse wheel. That might be my problem. Oh, but I can do the two-fingered scroll. So you can see here, ah, so this is really what I missed, which is that you, uh, my, you, know, that you can see that the data, uh, you can kind of zoom in and out to see. And what I love about this, I guess, is you can see the data about the planets in the newly discovered so solar system in relation to planets in our current solar system. Uh, great work, thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next project. Uh, I'm going to go to um, this code pen from Robin. Random, oh, I like, random walkers surrounded by their Voronoi sector. So, so this is great. I haven't done a tutorial or coding challenge or anything about Voronoi tessellation, Voronoi geometry, whether I'm pronouncing, Vero I just need to do a pronunciation challenge where I try to say the word Voronoi correctly. Um, and let me look in the notes here submitted by Robin, uh, which is, um, uh, this is random walkers surrounded by their Voronoi sector, and this is using D3. So it looks to me, I guess I, I think the idea is that these are all moving, all these little dots are moving, and the Voronoi calculation is happening every frame and moving the things around. So I, you, can, you can imagine a lot of possibility, design possibilities that you could build off of this. Okay, uh, this is on CodePen and all the links to these projects I'll put in this video's description. Okay, now I'm going to go to uh, this CodePen from Alka and uh, I'm gonna just change the view to full. Uh, whoa, look at this. Rainbow flow and hex bins. This is quite exciting and interesting. Um, so these are particles moved by noise grouped into hexagonal bins using something from D3 called hex bin. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I'll have to explore that sometime. With their color disparity being the amount in that group with some effects to make it look like 3D pillars. It really has a quality of, um, uh, uh, almost like, it's very architectural. And I, I love the idea that maybe I could kind of fly over it or, uh, uh, you know, what's that game that I used to love called Qbert or something? It has exactly this quality where you have the little character who bounces down. Um, really nice choice of color, great stuff. Okay, so um, let's keep moving. I'm, going, I'm just doing these quickly. Ah, okay, so now I'm gonna get to something a little bit different, which is uh, C. Manny has been thinking about, so one of the things I have is I have, and how am I on time? I've got my limit, I hopefully won't take seven minutes to discuss this, but that's my limit, 30 minutes of introductory stuff. Uh, so if I go to the coding train GitHub repository slash rainbow topics slash issues, and what, what you see here is all of these submissions from people of different ideas of things that I could explore on the channel. And there's so many wonderful things. Oh, I would love to do a double pendulum. I love that, like, blah, blah, blah. double pendulum. Wonderful, wonderful idea. So one of the things I'm trying to figure out is how to best organize this into categories. There's a lot of duplicates. Um, how to, um, 
how to, um, how to allow for efficient upvoting um, so I could get a sense of if there are things that are particularly desired from the community. Um, and so what you, the system that I have right now for that is just sort of a free-for-all of submitting issues. <laughs> and then if I go under sort and I sort by thumbs up, we can see, oh, look at that. What's on the top here? M machine learning. Oh, look at this. Mathematically involved. <laughs> yes. Um, um, or, actually, <laughs> and uh, planned, meaning I'm planning to start tackling some of this stuff next week. And eventually, this, this I do want to break out, and this has got just like sort of a long list of stuff. I want to break this out probably into separate uh, issues to check them off one at a time. So you can see kind of what people have upvoted just through the GitHub system. And so C. Manny uh, has started working on, uh, maybe this is a visualization where you can see, look at this, where <laughs> using, I, it looks like this uses the attraction force coding challenge and um, the, um, uh, um, and also uh, maybe matter.js for some of this collision stuff. I'm not sure, I'm just speculating. And so um, this is a great uh, ex exploration that we can sort of see like, you know, maybe we could use this actually to pick something at random. <laughs> and the, the larger ones, oh, look at this, I can drag it around. Machine learning is taking over. Um, so anyway, if anybody's interested and has thoughts or feedback about how to organize, um, there's, a, a GitHub, there's an issue thread. Let's see if I can find it. Um, I would suggest coming in right here. Uh, where? Let me see if I can, uh, let me just, if I search for topics, now that's gonna be in everything. What if I search for C. Manny? No, I feel like there was, I, somewhere there's a, I'll find it, somebody will post it in the chat. But I feel like there's a discussion, maybe a place where you could participate in this discussion. Or certainly you could go to, um, actually maybe what's, you could go to uh, C. Manny's GitHub, the Rainbow Topics repo um, there. Okay, um, let me, uh, let me just get myself here, open a little bit more. Uh, I got this chat going, I'm seeing the, uh, okay, so now I'm ready to get started, and I'm just gonna ah airplay. Ah, here it comes. Uh, oh, mirroring. Is it gonna work? <laughs> I might take a five-minute break later to restart my computer um, because I think that yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do this now. Actually, let's uh, because. I think sometimes everything just needs, everything just sometimes needs a reboot. So I'm gonna go over to the whiteboard, ah, which is, and er erase that and talk to you about some of the topics I'm gonna do today. Uh, okay, so let me restart this computer. And let me go over here. Uh, you're, you're in the void right now, but I think you can still hear me. And as soon as I press this button, I'm gonna be standing right in front of you. It's a very professional operation I've got going here. And I'm going to erase this. You know what I would like to do this afternoon is I'd like to just come up here and wash this whiteboard just by myself. I could play some, you know, some Mozart. <laughs> wash the whiteboard, soothing tones. That, that's the kind of thing that really brings joy to my life. But right now I'll just erase it and it'll be all smudgy. It's fine. You can see I haven't been here since last Friday. Okay. So this is erased. Um, so there's two, um, and let me just, I'm back here. Uh, I don't know what this is gonna do. Uh, let's see if this works. If we can log in here. Ah, computer is now rebooted. And behind me, hello. I am now uh, gonna wait for everything to start up. We're gonna give this one more try, let's see. Okay, this I don't need. This is running, okay. So here we go, and I'm connected to this Wi-Fi. Yep, okay, here we go. One more attempt here. Ah, there we go. So now we've got the, uh, uh, we've got this here. Okay, fine, fine, go away. Okay, there we go. And now I can go to here. Is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen?
I have exactly 30 seconds in my half an hour limit. So I will continue our coding train storybook. A million random digits with 100,000 normal deviates. Bookmark. A bookmark would really help. <clears throat> it's really loud. Oh wait, that's totally not working at all. It 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 disconnected. <laughs> I'll at least read one number for you guys. Fifty thousand four hundred eighty-six. Today's coding train is brought to you by the number fifty thousand four hundred and eighty-six. That's a great number. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh well. Um, yeah, people, I am getting a couple of people saying that my mic is quite low compared to other videos. Uh, I see like a nice green stretch, but um, let me, I, will, I will turn it up a tiny bit. I have a little dial over here. Uh, may, uh, maybe that nicked. So I'm just going to uh, up this dial a tiny bit. Oh, now, okay, wait. So maybe that's a little bit. Everybody says it's fine though, so I'm going to keep it. Oh, sound is good. Mic is fine. Okay, 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 okay. I made it a little bit higher. <laughs> okay, so why did this disconnect? I guess I have to give up on this because it came back. I don't know why it disconnected. Okay, uh, and then just system preferences and sound, multi-output device. And as always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot. This okay, dot. here we go. This, this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. This. Okay. So uh, what what I want to do? So I have two things I want to look at. One is uh, what are we at now? Eleven ten. So I've. I don't know if I'll get to all of this, but I want to look at texturing geometry um, in processing. Maybe I should start with that. So this is the last week that I'm going to uh, finish off some new content and videos from the first course, Nature of Code course, which is more about physics and simulation. And one thing that I've been wanting to do for a really long time is make a uh, inverse kinematics example. Um, uh, which is a technique that you can use to calculate the positions of, you know, for lack, for, you know, one scenario is thinking about how a robot arm works. Um, it's actually a, an algorithm that's used in robotics. But, you know, in terms of a visual example, how might we make a, a swimming fish or eel, um, uh, a tentacle? There's a lot of skeletal body type motion types things that we can do with this idea of forward and inverse kinematics. So, and th there actually are um, in processing itself. Maybe I'll start with this. Uh, in processing itself, um, there are uh, some examples. I believe it's under, under topics, interaction. Yes. So here, under uh, topics interaction, there are examples follow one, two, three, and reach one, two, three. Let's just look at follow uh, two, for example. I don't know which one this is going to be. But you can see this is a two-segmented arm that's following the mouse. And let me move that over here. So these examples are by uh, Keith Peters, I believe. It says there, and Keith Peters, does it say that? Yeah, based on, or based on code from Keith Peters. Keith Peters has a YouTube channel called Coding Math, which is a wonderful uh, YouTube channel, especially if you really want to like, get into the math stuff of stuff. <laughs> um, and uh, it's called Coding Math, so you can find it, I'll link to it. Um, I believe that Keith Peters has a couple videos. I definitely watched them quite a, uh, at some point. <laughs> not recently, on um, forward and inverse kinematics. So, and one of the things about Keith's channel, uh, one of the things about coding math is that it doesn't use P5.js, it doesn't really use any frameworks. So for those of you who are kind of like that vanilla JavaScript, raw guts of the code stuff, um, that's a great resource for you. Okay, um, so, um, so uh, here we go, let's see. Um, I am now, so let me think about, let me think about how to do this. Ah, wrong, <laughs> wrong button. Okay, so I want to do, what I want to do is, um, I think I want to just cover, uh, polar coordinates because 
I just keep using it in every single video. I think it's worth making just like a five minute polar coordinates video. I probably have one already from a bunch of years ago in processing, um, but I wanna see if I could just do a really quick like polar coordinates tutorial in P5.js. Um, so that's one thing. Then I wanna look at forward kinematics. And maybe we can make like a jiggly tentacle like thing. And then I want to look at uh, inverse kinematics. And we can make some, you know, just a simple like moving like snake like thing. Um, <laughs> tentacle snake. Uh, and then I, I really would like to do a like a swimming fish simulation. So the problem, you know, I, I'll try to come up with a, um, so I don't actually have a sense of exactly how to do this, but I've seen lots of really great demonstrations of it. So I think if I can get through these topics while I'm doing that and building examples for those of you following along, you might have some ideas that I can build into a fishing swish, a, a fishing swish, oh my God, my brain is not working, a swimming fish simulation. Okay, uh, all right. How's this working still? Yeah, this, this whole sound system thing I've got going, I have to completely revamp it. And I'm on the wrong camera once again. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna get started. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my, whoa. I'm gonna do my polar coordinates example with CodePen. Why not? Um, and I'm going to log in. Oh, what's the chance I can remember this? No. I do, by the way, use 1Password. <laughs> the problem is I don't have 1Password installed open on this computer that I log in for. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to look it up. I know where I can look it up. Bear with me for a second. <laughs> I'm going to look up my CodePen password. Uh, uh. Uh, okay, hold on. One pass. We're here. On one password. Okay. Ta-da! Okay, I'm in my 1Password account. I'm going to do a new pen. Uh, I am going to, uh, I think I like this view. Uh, and then I only really want to look at the JavaScript. Um, and I'm going to say function setup, function draw. I'm going to go to settings. And uh, JavaScript, I'm going to add a CDN, OP5.js CDN. This is what I'm doing is I'm just setting up a code pen project to use, wow, how come that's not working? Uh, CDN uh, P5.js. I mean, I, I don't know why this is not coming up, but I'm going to look for P5. Here it is. Uh, and click on this. So uh, the P5 library is a library that you can uh, reference from your code in a variety of different ways. You can download the library, but one of the easy ways to do it is just to get this link from um, uh, CDNJS, which CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. So I'm gonna grab that link here. I'm gonna go to CodePen and I'm just gonna add external JavaScript right there. So now this CodePen project will have a reference to P5.js itself. And uh, I, I think I'd like to make a pitch that P5, it'd be nice to have P5 in this list here of things you can quickly add. Ah, where did that go? Um, and now I can just do save and close. Oh, so uh, polar coordinates, call it that. Um, uh, polar, the, the polar, isn't there like a, the polar, the polar express? 
<laughs> the Polar Express, two coordinates, town. Okay, and now if I say, just to see if this works, create canvas. And background, 51. And save. Uh, oh, this, shouldn't this work now? What am I missing? Uh, console. I don't see any console errors. What am I missing here, folks? Uh, uh, code pen aficionados, copy in import. Did I not? Actually, uh, oh, I have to, oh, whoops, I have a typo in there. Thank you. There we go. Okay, great. I'm live and working. Okay, uh, Matt uh, asked, don't you need to a div element to bind your canvas to? So you don't actually, P5 is set up in a simple way where it just, uh, what it does is it creates the canvas element and just appends it to the body of your document at the end. So it's not the be all end all of everything, but it'll get you, it'll get you working here. Okay, so, um, uh, okay, here we go. I feel like I'm a little, little, having a little trouble getting kind of going today. Let me, Okay, so this is going to go some, in some, probably if um, Mathieu, when you get to watching this, Mathieu who does a lot of editing of these videos, this will I think go in the nature of code <laughs> chapter, it could I, actually it could go into P5JS additional topics. It, it could also go in nature of code chapter three, because um, that's also where I already have a video, but we'll put this in P5JS additional topics. Okay, uh, or it could be like a Q&A <laughs> video, whatever, no, additional topics is good. Uh, okay. Hello, uh, welcome to a video. <laughs> Wait, I gotta just get, get right into it. This is gonna be like, we're gonna make a, I'm gonna be releasing a five minute YouTube video. It's gonna be very exciting. Hello, in this video, I wanna talk about something called polar coordinates. Okay, what are polar coordinates? And I've been, I've been making all these videos, coding challenges, where this scenario comes up over and over and over again. I have a point here, call this point x, y. I have, uh, relative to that point, I have some sort of angle. Call that angle, angle. What if I want to find a point out here based on that angle and a distance to that angle? So this is what I mean by polar coordinate. A, a Cartesian coordinate is an x, y coordinate in a, uh, named for the French mathematician René Descartes, uh, an <laughs> xy coordinate um, in a two-dimensional space. So we, we move over x spaces, we move up y spaces. In the computer graphic system, you know, we've got, the, we've got the flip thing where we move over x spaces, we move down x spaces, and that's xy. A polar coordinate is thinking about a coordinate that is defined by a radius or a distance from a distance um, and an angle, often using the Greek letter theta to define that angle. The pro the reason, the, so both of these are useful ways of thinking about points in space. If I want to do a spiral pattern, polar coordinates are going to be really useful because I could just change that angle and maybe shrink the radius and I've got a spiral pattern. The issue is that all drawing functions in a, a computer graphics things like P5JS or processing, uh, fill in the blank there, think about, really only think about coordinates and Cartesian coordinates. So the ellipse function, which draws a circle, takes an xy. The point function, which draws a point. The line function, the rectangle function, all of these require xy. So what if you are thinking about r theta and you want to, um, you want to have your program run with this idea of r theta, but you have to draw with xy. So we need a formula to convert from polar to Cartesian. 
We also sometimes want to convert from Cartesian to polar. I'll maybe I'll talk about that in a separate video. But in this video, I just want to look at polar to Cartesian. And the way to do this boils down to trigonometry, trigonometric functions. So if I have a triangle and I say this is my angle theta. Oh, I'm, hi, I'm over here. <laughs> Time out. This is going to get edited. I'm going to just shift the camera a little bit. I, I got, it got bumped. Turn it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, I'm back after fixing the camera. Um, if I have this triangle, I have a theta, an angle here. This is my r, right? So I know this point. What I want to do, this is some x, y. What I want to figure out is what is this point? And I'll call this uh, uh, x2, y2, or whatever. If we call this x1, y1. How do I get this point? OK, well, if I knew what this was, I'll call this dx, as in like delta x, the change in x, and this is dy, the change in y. If I knew these two values, then I could say x1 plus dx equals x2, and, and y1 whoops, plus dy equals y2. So if I could get these two values, then I could move from here to there. So how do I get these two values from these two values? And this is, where's my eraser? This is exactly what we need to do. Okay, I've drawn the same diagram so many times now. Let's just, let's just make the math happen. Okay, so do you remember, so at some point in your life, you might have heard of a function called sine or cosine, SOHCAHTOA, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. That's referring to the sides of a right triangle. And guess what? This is a right triangle right here. This is opposite to the angle. This is adjacent to the angle. So sine of theta equals opposite dy divided by hypotenuse, which is r in this case. Cosine of the angle equals adjacent, which is dx, divided by hypotenuse, which is r. And these equations can be rewritten another way. I can simply say dy equals r times sine of theta. Now, you might be asking, how do I get from here to there? One of the things you can do with an equation is you can multiply both sides of the equation by a number. So if I multiply this side by r and this side by r, this side becomes r times sine of theta, and this side becomes just dy, because dy times r divided by r, r divided by r is 1, so this just becomes dy. And dx also becomes r times cosine of theta. So now I have those two formulas. So if I have this xy point, I have an angle and a r, a, a distance, a, a radius, or a length, I don't know what to call it, then I can calculate dx and dy based on that and get that point. Let's make that happen in the code. So I have a very simple code pen here open. Uh, I'm using the p5.js library, and so the p5.js library is already loaded into this code pen project, and the link to this code pen project will be in this video's description. Um, okay, so if you want to know how to do that, I have another video about how to set up a p5.js project in CodePen. So what I want to do, and actually um, just very, very simply, is I'm going to say, what if I have, uh, let me just do this all in setup, I think, right now, and we can, or, or in draw, it's fine. What if I have an x and a y, which is like 100, 100. Can you see this font is very, very um, small? Hold on a sec. We'll edit this out. I think I need to make the font bigger. Um, so how do I, where is that? Under settings, is that like under, where do I set my font size settings? Somebody who uses code spend more frequently, let me know. Uh, can I do it here? Tidy, maximize, minimize, settings. I really want it to be in settings. I'm waiting for somebody to tell me. <laughs> uh, I saw people typing things. Font size looks good. It looks so small to me. You really can read that? Uh, I could do the browser scale thing, but I hate doing that because it makes everything bigger. There's got to be a way. Maybe it's under here. Uh, let's try this. Let's try this settings. Uh, okay, hold on. Stay for a second. 
save. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do, I know I could do the command plus thing, but there's got to be a way. Here we go. Code font size, let's try 26. Save all settings, and then let's go back. Okay, that's better. Okay, I'm back with a bit smaller, a bit, a bit larger font. So now, I just want to draw a point at that XY. And I'm going to say stroke 255 to make it white. There you go. Look at that tiny little point. There it is. Hi, tiny little point. Okay, now, it's a happy point. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for so long. Uh, okay, stroke weight. Let's make it a little bigger. Stroke weight 8. Uh, okay, there's my point. Ah, that's not a good location for this point. Let's put it uh, further down at uh, 300. Okay, now what I want to think about is, let's say at this point, I, I want to have an angle of 45 degrees. So I'm now going to make an angle equal to 45 degrees. Now here's the thing. 45 degrees in a computer program is goes this direction. So actually what I really want, I can't, is 45 degrees, oh this is so hard, 45 degrees this way, which is negative 45. And 45 is, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to work in units of measurement called radians. <laughs> no, stop now, right now, go back. So here's the thing, I always get into these videos and I'm like, okay, well do I need to explain radians? And I did that in a different video, should I have been doing that in this video? Am I going to take two minutes to explain radians now? Let me do that again, and I'm just going to use, I'm going to set angle mode to degrees, okay? So I want 45 degree, a 45 degree angle, 45 degrees, uh, uh, because, it, because y points down will actually rotate me this way, and I want to rotate up. So I need negative 45 degrees. Now I keep saying degrees, because that's the way I tend to think about angles, 45, 90 degrees, 360 degrees. Um, most computer graphic systems will think about angles in a unit of measurement called radians. Uh, 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, and that, that's something that, uh, ha, um, that I'm going to just sort of ignore for this particular video, and I'm just going to say angle mode degrees. <laughs> so now P5 is going to think in terms of degrees, and I'm going to say angle negative 45. Okay, now what do I do here? I remember, I, uh, I need to have a distance, so I'm going to just say maybe 100 pixels out, 100 pixels, and I need to calculate var, whoops, <laughs> r equals 100, and I need to say var uh, dx then equals um, r times cosine of that angle, and dy equals r times sine of that angle, and now I can simply just, um, now I can simply just Make another point at x plus dx and y plus dy. And let's see what we get. There it is, 45 degrees. And I could also connect those, and I can connect those with a line. And you can see, whoops, and you can see there I have this line. Now, I could change that angle. So now I could say, let me have the angle be mapped, you know, I should actually, um, let me have it just be mapped to mouse x. So mouse x, which goes between 0 and width, I'm going to have the angle between uh, negative pi and pi. Whoops. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Negative 90 and 90, because I'm doing this in degrees. And you can see here, as I move, as I move the uh, mouse, it's changing that particular angle. Okay? So this is the idea. There's a lot of applications of this. Um, you're going to see that one of the reasons why I'm making this video right now is I'm about to do a coding challenge about something called forward and inverse kinematics, where if you think of this as one segment of a robot arm, what if it's attached to another segment and another segment, and how do those all rotate relative to each other? So this is the kind of thing that you need for that. I should mention that you can also, I could have made this exact same P5 sketch with just uh, the actual rotate function. So there is a rotate function, you can draw a line, a line, I can rotate it by an angle. And that would actually be a wonderful, perfect way of doing this as well. Um, I have some videos about that uh, um, probably as well, about how to do transformations using rotate and translate. But I, in this case, for this kinematics example that I want to make, um, having, um, having the, the doing, doing the polar to, polar to Cartesian, Cartesian conversion in the code is a good thing. Okay, I will see you guys in a future. I hope this video was somewhat useful to you. I'm, off, I'm, I'm a little off balance today.
What, what was that, like 35 minutes? Oh, and then the camera goes off. I'm checking the thermostat over here, because, uh, okay. So, okay, now that I did that in CodePen, I'm going to almost absurdly move to a different programming environment over here. What time is it? 1130. Uh, and this is called, this is processing. And I'm going to save this on the desktop as, uh, uh, let's call this forward, yeah, kinematics, because that's what we're going to do. I'm going to add setup. I'm going to add draw. Uh, okay, here we go. Now. I am going to, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, Michael in the chat writes, I'm surprised that the camera, do, the camera doesn't drive you crazy turning off. Oh, it, it does drive me crazy. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for my eraser, which is over there. And uh, I've got to fix something here with the microphone. And uh, I am going to, hold on, one thing I want to look, f uh, just bear with me for a second. I want to look for something here. Uh, uh, interactive fish, aquarium, desktop, wallpaper. Um, okay, look, okay, I'm coming at, there's a reason why I was d doing this interactive, Fish, aquarium, desktop, wallpaper, YouTube. Let's see if this comes up right. Is this the right, okay. So this is uh, one of my students here at ITP uh, pointed me to this particular example um, with a uh, fish pond. I guess this is a interactive desktop you can get. And it has these swimming fish. And so I really wanted to figure out a way to create this kind of simulation. And my suspicion is that the uh, concept of kinematics, whether it's forward or inverse, which I will get into, is a key to unlocking something like this. Um, now there's a lot more going, because this just connects so nicely with the flocking simulations and the different steering behaviors. So this is something I really am curious to see if we can, if can figure out a way to tackle it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, this morning, build, uh, whoops, uh, I'm going to build, um, if I play this again, I'm going to build basic examples of forward and inverse kinematics. Um, and let me just show you those actually already, which is, I, uh, this, well, uh, whoops, this follows. So this is an example of, this is an example of inverse kinematics. Um, and so I'm basically going to do the math. And th I think follow three does what I'm going to do, which is that if I connect this with a lot of segments, it gets much more interesting <laughs> than just these two segments. So, you know, I'm kind of imagining this as like, if there's like a sine wave controlling this that then affects what's connected to it, that you might get that kind of fish swimming effect. So this is really, oh, and I'm, um, so I want to build these this morning. Uh, it's not the morning anymore, it's 11.30. I want to do this uh, forward and inverse, and I'm guessing this is going to take me about an hour. That means two hours. <laughs> and then I'm going to go away, and I'm going to do lots of other work and answer lots of emails and catch up with a lot of other things. And then if I have time, I'm going to come back and try to make a fish thing based on these core examples. So uh, in the meantime, when I'm away, if those of you who want to try to make the fish thing and send me ways that you did it, I would love to hear from you, and that'll help me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this, I, I apologize that this laptop, um, I really should uh, put 
this second laptop that I use, I should put something green on it. Maybe I'll try to do that. That's a great suggestion. Maybe I'll try to get that for later today. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's get started here. Um, so what actually, let me open up, let me open up, um, sorry, under examples. And let me open up reach three. No, not reach, let's do the follow. Actually, reach is a good one. No, let's do the follow. I don't know, it doesn't matter. So here's, here's what you can see. So this is what I'm intending to build. And this is Keith Peters' example from Coding Math. Right, Keith Peters and Coding Math. That's the same person, am I right? <laughs> Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, okay, put on some face paint. All right, so let's, um, look. I think one of my problems today is that I'm not staying very hydrated. Somebody on Twitter asked me what brand of glasses these are. I have no idea. Garrett Light California. There you go. Okay, they really need to be tightened. They kind of like fall down a lot. Okay. This dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song, never forget the this dot. Okay, here we go. Somebody compose that song for me. I'm so distracted, I know. It's a little, it is really distracting. I've got all these different chats going, I've got lights and cameras everywhere, computers, things are blinking at me. I need a way to do this being less distracted. Okay, but I'm gonna get started. So let me minimize this. Let me minimize this. Uh, hold on, let me actually go to the... Uh, that's fine. Um, you know what? I think I like the I think I like the reach example better to show. Yeah. Also, I don't have to operate the mouse. Oops. Oh, did it close that? Ah. I feel like my evening live streams are always better than the morning ones. I always thought I was like way more on top of things in the morning, and now I'm, now I'm wondering about that. <laughs> Once again, I didn't get a good night's sleep last night. That seems to be the major problem. Uh, okay, um, reach, three. Okay. Okay. Um, What do I need over here? I think, I think I'm just gonna get rid of all this, erase it. I'm definitely gonna need to do some diagramming. The funny thing is, I have definitely built at some point in the past inverse kinematics examples, but I, have, I don't think I've ever done the forward kinematics, which in theory is like the simple thing. <laughs> so, but I'm a little bit nervous about doing that. Well, we'll see what, we see what, see what I get. Okay, I'm gonna put this over here. And you are the person I'm talking to. My glasses are on my face. I'm, oh, I'm in the wrong camera shot. Ah, I, don't, I used to not have a problem with remembering this. Okay, um, let's see, okay, here we go. Welcome to a multi-part Coding Challenge series on kinematics. This is an example from Processing. Uh, processing, a Java-based platform, open source, uh, creative coding environment that I use in a, a lot of my videos. Um, this is an example by Keith Peters from Coding Math, uh, of the Coding Math YouTube channel, which I also highly recommend. I believe that Keith Peters has a set of video tutorials on this exact same topic. With, uh, and, and if you're looking for the video tutorial where somebody who really understands the math and doesn't make any mistakes, um, I would recommend that video <laughs> to that channel. So just go leave and watch that channel. But you can see this is an example called Reach 3. And what you can see is that there's this bouncing ball moving along and that there's this kind of 
tentacle thing that's just reaching out, trying to touch it, trying to catch it, and then move along with it. And it behaves in this very, I might say, robot arm-like fashion. So this is an implementation of something called inverse kinematics, which refers to the motion of connected segments from the front to the back. So the front is what's really controlling it. It's trying to reach. And how should all these other segments be oriented so that that front can get as close as possible to this target? Versus forward kinematics, which is like, you know, I'm going to move this. <laughs> how should the rest of my arm move when I move this part of my arm, which is different than, well, I, I want to inverse, which I need to move my hand. How does the rest of my arm move in order to get there? So I want to do both of those things with the goal of making like a swimming fish or a weird goofy tentacle thing. Really the goal is like showing you how these things work and then you making something that's creative and colorful and exciting and lifelike and crazy and weird or beautiful or whatever. So um, let's get started. Let's look, let, so this video I'm going to do forward kinematics. And then I'll do some other videos that I'm not sure yet. So let me move over here and let's discuss what the core stuff that we need to build into our code is. So we need, so the idea is, and if I just think of it as two segments, that I need to have these, I, I think I'm gonna call these segment objects. So I'm gonna have segment objects that almost as if they're connected with a joint. Now, by the way, you could probably do a lot of this using a physics engine like Box2D and a Revolute joint, which I have other videos about, but I'm gonna do this without a physics engine, just kind of with the raw, trigonometry math that we need. So the idea here is that I have a segment and every segment would have a, a, a kind of starting point A. We'll call this point A, which is an XY point. It also has an end point, which I'll call B, which is also an XY. And one of the crucial pieces of data that I'm gonna need is this angle. So first, all I wanna do is create one segment with an angle, change the, an angle and a length, sorry, would keep, the distance between these two points is the arm's length, the segment's length. So I want to just create one segment with an A and B point and an angle, and I want to be able to turn it. Let's just do that to start. So to do that, I'm going to get out of this example here. I'm going to create a new tab, and I'm going to call it segment. I could probably think of something better, but segment, I think, is a good, and actually that's probably from Keith Peters' example. I'm, I'm sure that nomenclature is used there. So I'm gonna make a segment class, and what did I say each segment needs? It needs a, big, a start point, an A, A, I'm gonna use a P vector object to store an X and Y for that point. It needs a B, I'm gonna use, a, that's its endpoint. It needs a length, which is the distance between those two points, and it needs a uh, angle, which is the angle. Now here's the thing. Now what I'm realizing, if I go back to this drawing, is really the information is A, length, and angle. B is a point that I calculate based on how that angle is changing. And this relates exactly to this idea of polar and Cartesian coordinates. And I just made a separate video about that. If the tr po what polar and Cartesian coordinates are, I would uh, you'd find the link to that video in this video's <laughs> description. But the short version of that is, if I have a point here, and I have an angle, and I have a, a distance, a length, a radius from here to here, I can get this point by, by, by saying r cosine of theta, r times cosine of theta, and r times sine of theta will give me the, uh, the, the how far to move along the x-axis and how far to move along the y-axis to get to here. So those formulas I derive and explain them more in a separate video that you could look at. Okay, so if I come over here, what I'm gonna do now is say, okay, what, when I create the segment, what does it need? Well, it can get an X and a Y, like where is it? And it can get a length. And so I'm using just different variable names for the parameters that get passed in. And it can get an initial angle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say A equals a new P vector at X, Y. Length equals whatever length we specify. And uh, the angle equals whatever angle we specify. That's pretty good. And then what I can do next is, I, let me just write a function called show, where I'm gonna draw it as, a, I'm gonna say stroke 255, stroke weight two or four, and then I'm gonna say line from, from a dot x, a dot y to b dot x, b dot y. Okay, so now the idea here is that I can say something like, segment, seg, 
for segment. Uh, seg segment is a new segment, and maybe I'll have it uh, start on the left-hand side of the screen and point to the right. So it's going to be at something like 10, 200 with a length of 50 and an angle of 0. And then I want to say segment.show. So now I have this idea of a segment. It starts at, you know, if, I, if this is my canvas, it starts right here at like 10, 200. It has an angle of 0 and a length of, I don't remember I said 100. So I should see something like this on the screen. Now I've missed a key step here. I missed it on purpose. But let's... Let's just see uh, what happens. Is that a background? Now let's run this. OK, I got an error. I got a null pointer exception. So what does null pointer exception mean, by the way? Null pointer exception means you're trying to use something whose value is actually null. And so you can't use it. The value is null, nothing, <laughs> sadness, void, sad, nullness. Let's, let's get it out of being null. And the thing that's null is not A. A is a vector. B was never calculated. So like I said, B is a thing that you calculate based on where A is, what the angle is, and what that length is. So I'm going to write a function. I think I'm going to write a function called uh, calculate, I don't know, there's probably a better name for this, calculate B. <laughs> Update N, something like that. So I'm going to do that, calculate B. And so how do I do this? Now I could do that math. All I need to do is say, hey, dx, the change in x is the length times cosine of the angle, and the change in y is the length times sine of the angle, and then uh, b is a new p vector, which is x plus dx, y plus dy. So I now have, uh, oh wait, no, sorry, a dot x, a, a dot y. So I now just calculate what is the change along x and y from a based on the length and the angle, and then give me that new p vector. And if I say now in setup, in the, in the constructor, calculate b, we now see there it is. There's that segment with an angle of 0. Now let's, let's see if this is really working. Um, let's change the angle to, uh, and I need to work with a unit of measurement called radians. So if I, um, if I just wanted it to be 45 degrees or negative 45 degrees converted to radians, um, that you can see, now it's pointing upward. So we got the idea, this is working. I have one segment. Yay! <laughs> now, okay, so what's the next step here? Ooh, I need a break. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. <laughs> okay, what's the next step here? There's, there's a few different things. One is, oh, maybe we should see, maybe we should make that angle change. Um, so I'm going to write uh, a function called, I'm going to say in draw, I'm going to say, uh, 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 let's, let's, let's leave that till later, actually. I was thinking like we would use Perlin noise to make the angle change or just have it turn around, that type of thing. Um, but I do kind of want to move it a little bit over and maybe make it a little bit longer. So let's do that. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need another segment. I need another segment that connects to that segment. Hmm. Let me think about this. Do I want to introduce... I, I, I'm probably going to need an array, but I also need the segments to have an awareness of which one they're connected to. So actually, first, let's add something. The segments need to know, the segments are going to need to know who they're connected to, and I'm going to call that a parent. So this particular segment, oh, I got a great idea. <laughs> this particular segment that I made has no parent. The parent is null. But I'm going to make a new segment that's connected to this one. Like I want to say segment, segment 2, I really want an array, but I'm going to do it this way just for a second. I'm going to say segment 2 is a new segment, and I'm not going to give it a position. I'm just going to give it a parent. Right? I want to be able to say, I sometimes want to make a segment at this exact location, but I sometimes just want to make a segment that's connected to another segment. So I have two different ways of making a segment, and guess what? In Java, which processing is, you can have two different constructors, and you could just write both of them. So the second constructor is going to be just like the first one, but instead of taking an x, y, a length and an angle, it's going to take another segment, I'm going to call that a parent, and a length and an angle. 
So its A position is actually, so first of all, its parent is not null. Its parent is equal to its actual parent, <laughs> right? The one that was assigned. And its location, where it is, is what? This segment's location A is at the exact location where this segment's location B is. So all I need to do is say its location A should be at parent.b.x, parent.b.y. Okay, so that's another way. And then the rest is the same. Length, angle, calculate, B. Okay, so this I think is good. And now I'm going to say segment 2, segment 2 show. Hey, look at that. And its angle is also 45. Well, let's give it a different angle just so we can see. Uh, let's give it an angle of zero. We can see there's our two segments. Now here's the thing. I haven't really connected these things. <laughs> like one of the things I want to do is I would like the, um, what if I just wanted them to spin? So what if I put them more in, what if I put them in the center? And so that's, that should be in the center. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to write a function called like update. Where I say angle equals angle plus 0 0.01. Just so it rotates kind of slowly. And I'm going to say segment one update. Is that too slow? Oh, oh, so one of the things is it's doing it, the angle's changing, but guess what? Whenever the angle changes, I need to recalculate the endpoint. I don't see anything because I haven't updated, I haven't calculated B. So anytime I change the angle, I need to recalculate its endpoint. So the angle changes, recalculate its endpoint. Now let's run this again. There we go. Ah, but that other one is not moving. It's not connected to it. That's no good, right? I need to say that. Uh, I need to say basically like if I have a parent, when I update myself, if I have a parent or if parent is not equal to null, then what I want to do is, um, and um, then what I want to do, if parent is not equal to null, sorry, I'm like thinking about this, what I want to do is get my angle, well, okay, a couple things. First, I need to set A, my point A is equal to uh, parent.b.copy. So that's, by the way, another way. I did this here. I, um, I just made a new vector from parent.b. So another way I could do this, actually, that's a little bit more less code to write, is I could say parent.b.copy, which just makes copies a function that's part of the p vector object that uh, copies it. So I could always uh, update by uh, making um, saying that. And then I can now. Now I need to update both of these. So now we can see that they are both, that that is connected. So as one turns, the other one is connected. So this is really uh, forward kinematics. Yeah, I could do, someone in the chat is saying I could say child, not parent. And that's actually a very good point. <laughs> but you know, I, I just, thought of it that way, probably because somebody else implemented it that way. So the, you know, that, would, that might be a good improvement. Maybe I'll double back and kind of see if that's a good refactoring. But I encourage you to try that as your own exercise to, use, uh, to, to create a child rather than a parent. Um, and so now what I should be able to do, by the way, um, is, yeah, because when I iterate over them, I guess I could start at the last one. But if I had child, I could iterate forward through them. So uh, now you, you caught me, but I'm going to keep going with the way that I'm thinking about it. And let's see, if I have some time at the end, I'll refactor it. I wonder if I should refactor it now. Pa time out. <laughs> thinking about this. Um, you guys, I, I, so that's why sometimes it's great for me to look at the chat, and sometimes it's kind of problematic. I'm trying to think if changing it to child is better. I like the idea of being able to pass in the one that it's being made from, though. I think I'm going to keep it for now, because the next thing that I want to do, one thing I'm wondering about is why is this second one, oh, it's spinning. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's actually, okay, okay. You know what? 
I created something accidentally that's working. Okay, I'm coming back in. Okay, I'm actually gonna keep the parent thing, but I, I think this idea of, of having child references versus parent references is something that is worthwhile considering. Here's the thing though, I just realized this is kind of working in a way that it's supposed to by accident. And so one thing I wanna do is I'm gonna, I wanna segment out this idea of, it wrote, of the angle changing from it updating based on its parent. So I'm gonna just do, um, I'm gonna write another function. I'm gonna call it like wiggle or something, or I don't know, like, yeah, let's just call it wiggle, because eventually I'm gonna have the arms wiggling maybe. And so that's, that's where the angle changes. <clears throat> and then I want, I'm gonna call update separately. So, because I wanna show you what's really going on here. Because what happens if I only wiggle segment one? And it's not wiggling, it's turning. You can see that it's actually, that segment is always keeping, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not moving along with it realistically. It's always keeping its original angle pointing to the right. So one of the things when you update in forward kinematics, as I'm mo moving forward from arm to arm, from segment to segment to segment, I always need to bring the parent's angle along with me or pass the angle from the parent to the child. So that happened accidentally because I was rotating both of them equally, but once they're rotating in different ways, that won't work anymore. So what I want to do here, in addition to a up, update just pulling in the parent's location, I also want to take my angle and offset it by the parent's, um, the parent's angle. Is that enough? Is that all I want to do? Let's take a look at that. No. Oh, that's kind of interesting though. Um, hold on, <laughs> I have to think about this. What did I do wrong? I don't want to, I don't want to, oh, I just need to start it at that angle. Or by, that should work, right? Wait, 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 what did I do wrong? It's angle, what did I do wrong here? It's kind of interesting. I just want to, oh, because it's plus equal, equal to the parent's angle. No. Plus its own angle, angle equal to its parent angle plus itself, which is this problem. I cannot keep summing. Yeah, I have to start over each time. Oh, I have to keep track of them separately. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like how people, sorry, I shouldn't look at the chat. People are very unhappy with the fact that I don't know what I'm doing, which is the point, you know. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of a, it is something that happens here in my life. Okay, a lot. Okay, I cannot keep summing. So hold on. So let me go back to what I had there. Plus equal parent dot angle. So this is, this is way off, as you can see, because I'm accumulating all the time. I want to pass off the parent's angle, but just as an offset to whatever its own angle is actually doing. So in a way, I kind of need two variables here, which is um, I need it to do its own thing and then always just add. So I need to calculate its own angle based on some, something that it's doing, which ir ironically, I think if I, um, and then add, so if I just said angle equal, if I just start with angle equals zero, and then add the parent's angle. Oh, I think the, I think the issue is actually that, um, I, I do need to, you know, the issue is actually that I'm going, this rotating the arm thing is sort of not that necessary, because I'm gonna calculate things in a different way. But I do need two variables, self angle and parent angle, yeah. So what I need is, uh, yeah, 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 okay, 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 okay. I need its actual angle, and then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, self angle. I'm gonna create a variable called self angle. That's a good suggestion. Self angle, and I'm gonna 
and this is, I'm sure there's an easier, there's, a, there's probably a condensed way of writing it, but just the way that I've created this example, I'm gonna have self angle start at that same angle, and then <clears throat> angle is always, Uh, self angle is the thing that I might have some algorithm to change it. And the angle itself is always, um, so uh, what I'm gonna do is angle equals self angle, right? Everything that's updating takes its own current angle as itself and then adds on, there we go, adds on the parent's angle. I think this is gonna work. There we go. So now, uh, and so let me see, what do I have here? What are the, oh, because the, the angle is zero. So the angle is zero, and this is exactly what I want. It's zero relative to whatever its parent is. And now if I actually gave it, instead of, you know, also negative 45 degrees, we can see now it's moving this way. There we go, this is what I want. So this, this angle turns, one, the, 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 the parent angle turns, and the other angle updates whatever its own angle is relative to the parent. So they can each have independent, independent calculations for calculating their own angle. So now, what can, I can start to do some interesting stuff here. So for example, I can say seg two dot wiggle, and that one is going to rotate itself along, so it's rotating relative to the other one. Now, I don't really necessarily have something that interesting here. They're both just rotating, and this is weirdly very similar to my solar system example, where one thing's rotating around one thing and another thing's rotating on another thing. But I think we're gonna get something much more interesting if we use a sine wave to rotate them, or Perlin noise. Let's try using Perlin noise. So I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna add a, a variable called x offset which is just gonna be some random value. And I encourage you to go back and look at some of my Perlin noise tutorials. Um, if Perlin noise is a smooth randomness. And then in wiggle, I'm going to say self angle equals the noise function. I'm gonna map noise of x offset, which has a range between zero and one to like between negative one and one. And those are some arbitrary angles and radians. And then I'm gonna increase x offset over time. So now, ooh, okay, so that's too fast. But we can see here, now I have this kind of arbitrary moving, almost like wiggling tentacle-like thing. So is the stream out? Did it freeze? Everyone's saying it's frozen, but I see it's still working. Hold on, I'm pausing. I was offline for 30 seconds. I can't explain why. Well, you know what? I want to double check something. Oh, I'm on the NYU Wi-Fi. Uh. I, I have this plugged into the, let me make sure it's plugged into the uh, Ethernet network. It is. I want to turn Wi-Fi off, um, but I'm afraid that's going to break something. I'm going to turn Wi-Fi off. I, I have a feeling that sometimes causes a problem. Hope it might break it again, let's see. I think I'm still here. Hopefully I'm still here. People tell me if I'm still here. Uh, okay. Uh, let me press these buttons. It's very disconcerting. Um, stream is better now. Yeah, you know what? I forgot to turn the Wi-Fi off. And because the whole point of this is I have a really good, fast, hard network here. And um, I think when it's connected to both, it probably also uses the Wi-Fi. Um, okay, so I'm back with this wiggling tentacle thing, which I'm gonna improve on in a second. Um, okay, okay, here we go. Let's keep moving on here. Okay. So now I have this wiggling tentacle, and I'm kind of mostly done with this idea of forward kinematics, but I wanna improve on this a little bit. So I, at very least, this is not a great, this is not a very sustainable uh, path. So what I want to do is either create an array or some other mechanism. Um, and actually, I think I'm going to try doing this without an array. So I'm going to, and I'm going to use kind of a concept called a linked list, where every object is just linked to another object, and I can iterate through them that way. 
So I'm going to create uh, something called a tentacle. I'm going to make my variable called tentacle. And tentacle is a new segment. Um, uh, tentacle is a new segment that's, that starts at 300, 200 with a length of 100 and radians of negative 45. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 4 int i equals 0, i is less than 2. I'm just going to add two segments to it. Um, segment next, okay, so hold on, what do I want? I want, uh, I want to say something like, oops, seg, oops, hold on. Ah. I want to say something like segment current equals tentacle, okay? Then segment next equals a new segment whose parent is the current one, and then the same thing, length 100, let's just do angle zero. And we're gonna start this with an angle of zero too. There's no reason to, um, to have that anymore. Okay, so, and, um, so the next segment is a new segment attached to the current segment. Current being the tentacle, which is kind of like the root, in, I could call this root if we're thinking about of a tree, and then I can say current equals next. So what this will do is say, I have a segment, attach the new one to that. Then make that the current segment so the new one attaches to that. So I think this algorithm should work and I should be able to just say, now I could just say tentacle wiggle, tentacle update, tentacle show. What this should do is if I run this, it's working but I'm only seeing that root one, the root segment. I don't see the one that's attached to it. So what I can do now is I can say segment current, I can use the same thing, equals, I'm just going to call it next actually, because I, just for this loop, I can say segment next equals tentacle, while next is not equal to null, then I can wiggle, update, and show it, and then I can say, um, I can wiggle, update, and show it, and then I can say next equals next dot, oh wait, I have to go backwards. Ah, this is why people were telling me to use parent, child. <laughs> so how can I, um, so let's add child. I'm going to have both. Let's add, and you probably don't need both, but I'm going to add a child reference as well. So this is like a, is that called double linked list, where they're linked forward and backwards? So um, what I'm going to do here is when I'm creating them, next is the new segment and then current.child equals next. So I'm also going to link it that way. Um, and that way now as I iterate through them, I can say next equals next.child. So I did this in a little bit awkward way, maybe. Um, so in other words, okay, uh, uh, this is hard to keep in your head, but let me try to say it again. <laughs> I'm starting with, and, and actually, it might make sense if I diagram this, but I'm starting with the, the, root, no, the root segment, the first one. I make a new one that's attached to it and its parent gets that current one. And the current one's child is the next one, so they're both linked to each other. And then current becomes this, so that when I make the new one, I link them with the same parent-child relationship. So that, I think, should work. And now I can iterate them. I start with the root, and I wiggle and update, and wiggle and update going from um, iterating through, and eventually one of them will not have a child, right? Because it, um, next, next it will be null. So I should, I should say just here, by default, it's null. Because at some point, we'll get to the end, at some point in this loop, we'll get to the end, and then it won't come back in. So the last one won't have that child. So as long as, as, long as it's null, okay, so this should work. <laughs> yeah, there's all three of them, okay? All three of them wiggling with their weird Perlin noise thing. So let's make this a little bit more interesting. Um, let me think about, let me, I kind of want it to feel more like a tentacle from the bottom. So I'm going to give its initial location uh, width divided by two and the height. So at least it's kind of starting from the bottom there. But now I need to think about how that range of angles. So the range of angles should actually be between um, around, around a negative 90 degrees, right? Because um, that's pointing up. 
So I want to offset that. So the, the, what I'm mapping to is like, it, whoops, uh, the max angle is something like negative pi divided by 2 plus, you know, 1. And the min angle is negative pi divided by 2 minus 1. So I want to map the, the noise to max angle min angle. I have a feeling like a sine wave might actually work better than this. Um, and now we can see, okay, we can see what it's doing now. It get, it's got a pretty broad set of possibilities in terms of its angle. So let's make this, uh, let's make this like a quite a bit smaller. Oh, wait, why is it, what did I do wrong here? Oh, because they're picking up from, wait a sec. Oh, I don't want them, ah, I only want the first one pointing up. The rest are all relative to the ones below. Aha. I don't know why I decided I had to do this like <laughs> kinematics thing. So let's actually leave it at point 0.1, negative point 0.1. And I'm just going to do something kind of like hacky, which is to say um, if it doesn't have a parent, uh, if, it, if it doesn't have a parent, I just want it to point up because I want the whole thing to point up. I'm going to say angle uh, plus equals negative pi divided by 2. All right. um, so that should, yeah, so that, has the, that just has the first one pointing up, but the rest pointing to the left and the right. Okay, so that was a quick little fix. And now I can make this um, much, much bigger of a range. And the other thing that I really wanted to do here is I can make a lot more of these. So let's make 20 of them, and let's just make the segments like 10 pixels long. And so now we have this wiggling tentacle-like thing with Perlin noise. I don't know what it's going to do. I kind of want the range to be bigger. Uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that it can play with forever. So let's make the range uh, bigger and let's maybe have the offset. Oh, you know what would be interesting to do here? I have a weird idea, <laughs> which is to um, have the offset move a little faster. Yeah, so we can see this. Now, I don't know what this is, this crazy, creepy arm. Why is the first one? Did I make the first one is still, a hun uh, is still have um, 100? Ah, so let's make this one 10. Right. So we can see here's my crazy, creepy tentacle arm thing. That I don't know what it's trying to do. But there you go. That's forward kinematics. Let's change it to a sine wave just to see what we get. So instead of using uh, Perlin noise, I'm going to map a sine between max angle and min angle. Let's try that. Oh, okay, and that's like way too much. So let's give that much smaller angle. So we can see now, oh, and they're all starting. So actually what I want, uh, this is, I'm getting ridiculous here, but let's all start them with this. Yeah, so this actually, if I give them a perfect sine wave, it's just gonna curl onto itself. But if those sine waves are slightly offset from each other, I'm kind of, I'm off the rails here. The train has derailed for sure. But let's, let's, let's make this a little bit more interesting. What I really want to do is add this as a parameter to the segments. So I don't want to just have them all be zero or all be random. Let me show you what I mean. I want that X offset, which I'm using essentially, um, I think in the Coding Math YouTube channel, I know that uh, he used, used a variable called phase, which is kind of what, I don't know if that's right though, but it's like, it's the thing that you're passing into sine or cosine. I often think of it as time. So let me use, let me use a T for time. And I'm going to add another argument here. And I'm going to set T, I'm going to do this, T equals T. And I could, I could really improve the way that these constructors are, uh, are I could combine the constructors in a, in a, probably in a, in a better way. But, so let me, just, let me just add a the last argument here, where now each of these, each of the, the segment always gets its time, the, the, the thing that you're passing in to sign or noise or whatever to set the angle. And um, what I'm going to do is I, um, just pass in zero here. Let's pass in zero for all of them. And we should have the same exact thing. Uh, and, oh, except for I want to call this T now, and T moves up by a certain amount. Okay, so now you can see this is what happens when I have the sine wave. There we go. <laughs> People in the chat are asking, what's 
his goal. I have no idea. This is, by the way, a way to think about creative coding. This is, this is stream of consciousness, improvisational. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just playing around. And I really should stop soon, though. So, OK, because I'm, I'm kind of off in the weeds here. But I, I, I think there's an interesting aspect here that I could do. So now, everything starts at 0. But what if the phase, we're going to use the word phase here, maybe. Or, or I can just say t, actually. t equals 0 t goes here, and then in this loop, I say t plus equals 0 0.1. Uh, so what if they're all just slightly off phase from each other? Now you can see I'm getting a sort of more, uh, a, 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 a bit of a different kind of quality to this. Now it's very much of an exact re repeating pattern. So I think if I also changed, you know, not only the period of these oscillations, but the, um, um, not, sorry, not only offset the, uh, where they are in terms of their oscillation, but change their period, um, which is, uh, or frequency. So that's, that's this variable here. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> and I'm gonna, let you, uh, I'm gonna let you guys play with these ideas, but I, would, I have a suspicion that if you mess around, oh, you know what, look what I did. Sine has a range I was using the range of output from the noise function, which is absolutely not correct. The sine function has a range between negative 1 and 1. So that's why, by the way, it was going. Um, so, oh, I think I'm getting close to this swimming fish kind of quality, too, as well. So um, I kind of want to put the Perlin noise back in also, now that I have this idea of them being slightly offset from each other. So let's put noise. And we can see, who, we can see I kind of got this, uh, also this wiggling quality to them, to it. And I, I kind of want to make the range a bit wider uh, to see what the sort of possibilities are. So you can see, I think that you will probably come up with a more creative way to make use of this forward kinematics idea. Um, and, you know, it'd be really interesting to now put an array of all of these across the bottom or, you know, map them to the F. Ooh, this would be great. May, you could make a creature, like a circular creature that has all these tentacles uh, uh, attached to the edges of it and it kind of wiggles along like a centipede. Um, try to make, uh, Nuno in the chat is saying, try to make the segments go shorter as they reach the tip. And that's certainly an interesting idea. Let's try adding that really quickly. So right now the segments are all, so I could do something like float length equals 50 and start uh, with that here. And then I could also shrink the length. So I could say like length equals itself times 0.9. So they're like 10% shorter each time. Okay, let's make them half as long each time. So you can, <laughs> let's make them 75% uh, as long each time. So, um, you know, I'm not making it obvious to see how that is because I'm not drawing, I could make them different colors, but you can see there's a lot of variables you could play with here. So I hope that you enjoyed this forward kinematics coding challenge. And in the next video, what I'm going to do is do the reverse of this, where I actually am starting where I want the end to be and how does the rest of it behave. Okay, um, thanks for watching and see you in a future video. Okay. Uh, if you ever implement your over-the-camera monitor, maybe also look into adding some kind of green-red LED stream status light. I don't understand what that means. Um, Zyphit in the chat. Um, so those of you who are worried about um, that, that uh, a part of this might have gotten lost, I am recording everything I'm doing to disk. So when I make an edited version of this challenge, or, or when Mathieu, who does the editing, makes an edited version of this challenge, anything that might have gotten lost over the airwaves will get um, picked up. Um, all right, so um, I'm trying to stay hydrated. Uh, okay. You can't see, so I'll, I'll, some people in the chat are saying, I can't see the whole code, I can't follow. This is going to get published on my GitHub repository. Uh, as I release the edited versions of these videos, I also make sure to upload the code. And in addition, even though this is in processing, I usually try to uh, make a JavaScript version. So I have a Java version, which is in processing, and a JavaScript version as well. Okay. Max angle and min angle are reversed in map. Let me check about that. Oh yeah, they are. I don't know why I did that. I mean, it doesn't really matter because the map function will work anyway, so it just goes the opposite direction. Uh, what if I, I just want to say sine t plus noise of t, and the range of that would be like negative 1.5 to 1.5. So here we've got like sine 
with some noise. And I'm just like messing around with this while I, uh, and then, uh, yeah. So anyway, you guys will be more creative with what you do with this. Let me put it back. Rainbow tentacles, okay. So that's forward kinematics. Oh, negative one to two. Oh, you're right, negative one to two. No wonder that didn't work. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so do I have time? It is 12.20. I would like to do the inverse kinematics. Um, Dusan in the chat asks, can you teach us how to upload code to GitHub and generally how to use it to organize our code? Well, uh, I, um, I will let you know that I have a whole uh, playlist of Git and GitHub tutorial videos. So I would encourage you to check those out first. And I'm sure, I didn't finish that playlist. I'm sure there are missing pieces. So I need to return to that and update some stuff. Okay, do, can I manage the energy to do inverse kinematics? And I'm gonna build it again from scratch because it kind of works pretty, I feel like it's gonna be easier to do that than adjust this. So inverse kinematics. Also, you don't necessarily have to watch both videos. So actually, why am I doing this? So let me make a new sketch. Save as inverse kinematics. And what I want to do, let me just go back to this one. And um, let me just save another version of it real quick. That has just some simpler stuff and the length being much longer. Uh, so let's see. And uh, what I want is for them to be, uh, let me do this also. I just wanna, I'm just going back to a simpler time. <laughs> just to have a visual demonstration. Uh, I'm gonna make these much more extreme. Okay. Oh boy, and I want to make this go much slower. Uh, and even slower, probably. And let's make this even more extreme. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna use this as a visual reference in my next video. Let me press some buttons here. So I think this is the last thing that I'm gonna do this morning. And then I'm gonna um, figure out a whole new way of doing sound in this room. <laughs> uh, I have a kind of an idea for that actually. Um, and come back. Okay, uh, all right, let's see here. Um, add colors or I'm leaving. Really? That's all it takes for you to leave if I don't add the colors? Uh, so adding the colors is actually kind of an easy thing to do. Oh, I always say that. Color uh, C and let's make um, uh, C equals a, a new color based on, um, let's just make it random. Oh, that's the worst thing to do. <laughs> You know what I should do? Ah, see, you got me. No, I can't add that. You know what I should really do is change the stroke weight. So uh, one thing that would actually be a more useful thing to do is just pass in I. Now you guys have caught me. And I'm off doing things that aren't in my video tutorial. Uh, there is no I. This gets zero. Pass in I. And then if they get, um, I really don't like how I have this organized. They get kind of their own index value into the array. So what I could do is I could do things like stroke weight, uh, you know, 10 minus I times two or something. Oh, there. Um, so uh, so uh, if I have like a stroke weight equals one, and then I say something like the stroke weight equals 10 minus I times two index. What is it? Index. <laughs> and do the same, oh, I hate this duplicate code. Gotta make an improved version of this. And you just do videos just about refactoring, and then I can say stroke weight, stroke weight. And now what you'll see is, there you go. Oh, that's really kind of nice, actually. Oh, I should put that in my video. 
I'll do it in the next one. Um, don't add colors or I'm leaving. But this was worth adding. How about make it 3D really quickly? That I'm not going to do right now. Uh, okay. Um, okay, this is a little bonus. All right. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this on the, at the, yeah, never mind. I'll just mention it in the top of my next video. Okay. Um, okay. So am I ready for this? Need a new sketch. I'm going to call this one inverse kinematics. Oh, do I already have one? Did I do that already? I'll replace it anyway. Let's replace it. Craziness. Oh, no, no, I'm in the wrong place. Desktop, where am I? Oh, that's weird. Oh, there's like an example in the, what's in that? Oh, I, I did make one already. I'm so confused. I'm putting these in, hold on. File, open, recent, inverse kinematics. Okay, right, that's, that's what I'm looking for, blank one. Okay, put this over here. Sketch, uh, take this out. What's this, reach? Okay, here we go. Uh, forward kinematics, okay. All right, here we are. I need some more water. Maybe I could take a break and fill this up with some water. <laughs> we all know what, 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 uh, what could happen if I try doing that. Um, let me do that, because I, I do feel like I need some water. And I will play you guys. Kitten song. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else? It's is all glitching. Yes, I'm, mu kittens, thank you very I'm much. muting my actually, you know what? I'm muting my microphone. Look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. That was a failure, by the way, <laughs> because both the, the, uh, they're both locked. I don't know where a place to get, um, I gotta find where there's like a water cooler on this uh, floor. Oh my God, it's 77 degrees in here. Why doesn't the, it's snowing outside, by the way, in New York. Am I, you can hear me again, right? Um, I'm gonna to need to deal with the, the uh, yeah. Oh, so here's the thing. Is it too quiet? I'm gonna dance with my tentacles. Hold on. Hold on. Too loud? That aside, you really could do something where make this music responsive. So if you did beat detection or just had the angles change according to the volume, I think there's some interesting possibilities there. Ah, I'm exhausted. I really need to get some water. Um, so, but it's okay. I think I'm close to, let's see, hold on. 
we'll have some of this. There's a little bit of this tea left. I, I look forward to the weird gifts or whatever of that. <laughs> I, I, I look, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so let's, give me another, let's, let's do a, oh no, soundboard died. Let me plug this in, charge it. Where can I plug it in? Where's the plug? You need an extra plug. No, there's no extra plugs. Okay, I'm gonna have to deal with this later. If I unplug that, oh, you know what I can unplug? Is this right now. Sorry, everybody. Riveting live stream. Listening to me narrate how I'm unplugging and plugging things back in. Um, okay. I am... <laughs> uh, okay, I am I'm really going to get to this. I'm really going to get to this next step here. But, um, but before I do that, I'm going to, sh so there was a request for the this dot song. Uh, by the way, I have a new Coding Train theme song that's coming. I heard a first version of it. I'm very excited about that. This dot, this dot, um, uh, SoundCloud. I'm going to make another attempt to get some water. Uh, It's probably very quiet. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> it's, I'm, okay, I'm going to attempt to get some water again. Enjoy the dancing tentacle. I will be back. I will be back. This dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. Never forget the this dot. <laughs> Somebody compose that song for me. Went on to some other music. Okay, um, that was another failed mission. I'm gonna have to do an exploration of this, the floor of this building, <laughs> to find <laughs> where there's water. Uh, okay. The other thing I'm noticing is my microphone is doing something weird here. So let me see if I can fix that. Like maybe it uh, doesn't have enough slack when it was kind of pulling the shirt in a weird way. Okay. Is there a different way? Because it's, I'm worried it's brushing up. Point it down, let's just try doing this. This is probably worse. Oh, let me go back. I am, okay, sorry, I'm looking, let's, hello, you're over there. Okay, okay. we're gonna do inverse kinematics. That's fine, it's gonna be fine. Okay, all right, tentacle. I gotta slow you down, tentacle. Uh, slow you down even more, tentacle. 
All right. <laughs> yeah. I want to put up a picture of the snow. Let me see if it's still snowing. I'm looking to see if it's still snowing. Oh, it's definitely still snowing. I really want to just like open the window and get all the cold air in here too. But this room has no windows. All right, let's do, you guys ready? Let's do inverse kinematics and then everybody can go to sleep or have lunch or whatever it is they're doing with the rest of their day. I go get some water, <laughs> stay hydrated, if I pass out, you'll know why. Uh, you should just bring a water bottle is what I just do, I could fill up. Okay. Hello, welcome to another coding challenge. And in this coding challenge, I'm going to do something called inverse kinematics. So over here, this is what I did in the, a previous coding challenge, which is called forward kinematics. And what's the difference between the two? In a weird sort of way, the fact that this arm is just doing kind of random weird stuff. I, I, <laughs> sometimes talking and recording in a room by yourself is a very strange thing to do. And your mind wanders off and you don't know where you are, or why you're here, or what's going on in the world anymore. And you just want to go and take a nap. <laughs> that happened to be just this moment. I am going to, um, going to start that over. Okay, here we go. Hello, <laughs> how are you? I'm doing okay, a little bit thirsty. No, that's the wrong thing to say. <laughs> Try this again. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Welcome to a coding challenge where I'm going to make something called inverse kinematics. And you might say, hey, look at that. Did you do it already? And I'll say, no, I have not. This is actually from the previous video where I did a simulation called forward kinematics. And so one of the main things I need to do before I get started coding is talk about, well, what's the difference between forward and inverse and why might you use one over the other? One thing I will mention if you watched the previous video is I did change one slight thing about the code, which you might be interested in. I added something to make the segments have a different stroke weight based on where they are. The, uh, a higher stroke weight towards the bottom and a smaller stroke weight towards the top. So that's kind of an interesting little variation that you could look at. Okay, now let's talk about, let me come over here and um, let me see, let me erase some of this. So I'm gonna leave this up here. Okay, so this was a diagram I had based on forward kinematics here over here, where the idea is I have a bunch of segments they're all connected to each other. Maybe these are segments of a kind of alien tentacle or they're a leg that's walking or whatever they might be. Robot arm, we're getting to that. The idea with forward kinematics is if I turn this one, then all of these should rotate with it. So the angle that changes here gets passed along to all of the segments that are connected. So this one turns and they all, and then if this one turns, it doesn't get packed to the one behind it, it gets passed to these. And so in that example of the tentacle, they're all kind of moving a little bit randomly with some pearl and noise, or I, I also use like a sine wave, or whatever, whatever algorithm you're using to move them. The point is, as you move one, it affects the other ones. Inverse kinematics does, well, <laughs> as the name is stated, the inverse. In other words, what if you imagine this arm, this, I'm calling it an arm for a reason, I guess, but this connected set of segments needed to reach and grab something. And this is a problem that happens in robotics. You create a robot arm that's a bunch of things connected to each other with some kind of like hydraulic rotational mechanism thing that I know nothing about. And you need to figure out, I want the arm to pick up this thing. So if my hand, if my hand is the robot arm, to get that, I know my hand needs to be there. What should the rest of me do? How do I, if I know that this needs to go here, how do I figure out how all of these should be oriented in order for it to do that? And you could, we, we might plainly see that this is you know, the best orientation for reaching something far away in that direction, but what if suddenly it needs to grab something here? Well, we can plainly see maybe a good way for it to do that would be this. But how do we calculate that? If we know the endpoint, how do we pass the angles back inversely through the segments? Inversely, is that even a word? That's what I'm gonna do, <laughs> I hope. I built this before, I think, but it's been years. I think, I have no idea. Uh, okay, so coming back over here, um, I am now looking at my forward kinematics example, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna start the code over from scratch, and I'm gonna say setup. I'm using uh, processing, which is a, a development environment, and uh, 
a Java library uh, for doing uh, creative coding, graphics and animation, more and more, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> uh, okay, so what I want to do, and I'm going to say size uh, 600, 400, and uh, there we go, we've got the window, and I'm going to say uh, background 51. So I want the same sort of idea that I had in the previous example, where I have this idea of a segment object. So let's take, let's, let's make this uh, object called segment. Uh, and I want to make a new, uh, I want to make a new segment. Uh, and I'm going to give it a location. I, again, this, the segment class doesn't exist. So I'm doing this reverse. I'm sort of thinking like, okay, I want to give it an XY and a length and maybe an angle. So this is similarly to what I did before. We're going to have to deal with some kind of like parent child stuff, but let's just start there. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to make a new tab called segment to create a segment class. And I'm also going to want my segment class to have, what do I think? I want it to have A and B. So let, let's, let me describe what I'm doing here. So if this is one segment, I want to have A, meaning the point over here, B, meaning the point at the end, length being how long that segment is, and angle being what's its angle of rotation relative to the x-axis. So those are the properties of this object. Uh, a, I'm going to say, um, what am I doing here? Um, <laughs> I've, I had an idea of what I was doing. Uh, angle and length. And I'm going to create a constructor function, which gets an X and a Y. And weirdly, I, well, and let's keep it the way it is. And uh, an initial angle, which ultimately is an initial, um, an initial angle and an initial length. Now you'll notice length just got highlighted as like light blue because length is a key word. It's a property, the length of an array. So I'm gonna change this to LEN for length because I don't wanna, it, it would be fine, but it's a little, I don't wanna make it unnecessarily confusing. So I'm gonna say A is a new P vector. It's at X comma Y. Its angle is that angle. And uh, its uh, length is that length that I specify. So now, is that what I said? So now if I run this, I got no errors, but nothing's happening. The next thing I want to do is I want to say segment.show. And I, this is just about exactly what I did before, and I'm just doing it again to kind of get started. I'm going to write a function called show, and I'm going to make a line between a.x and a.y and b.x and b.y. And I'm going to say stroke 255, stroke weight 4, and now, if I run this, I'm going to get the same issue I got before where I haven't done, I haven't figured out where B is. So I need a function called calculate, I guess a lot of this really is the same, calculate B, and this is, I'm going to use my polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation again. I have a feeling though, I'm going to have to, I'm going to start needing to calculate A based on B, because I'm going to move the arm to the point that it's trying to grab. So anyway, but we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to, what am I doing here? I'm going to calculate B, which is saying uh, the X offset from A is equal to the length times cosine of the angle, and the Y offset is equal to the length times sine of the angle, and then uh, B is a new P vector at X plus DX, Y plus DY. One thing I'll mention here is, um, uh, oh, sorry, a dot x and a dot y. One thing I'll mention here that I don't love is that every time I calculate b, I make a new p vector object. And in Java, on my desktop computer with you know, gigs of RAM, this is never going to be a problem. It is a little bit of an issue. It might make more, of a se more sense, and maybe I'll just do it right now for the sake of argument, for me to make a, an empty p vector. And then what I would do is I would say b dot set. So that would be, I'm not making a new object, but I'm just setting its values to these two values. And I think this will work exactly the same way. It's a bit more memory efficient, so to speak. And it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm on an update function where all I'm going to do is just calculate B, which is quite redundant right now, but uh, it's fine. Calculate, not calcutate. Um, and then uh, segment.update. So, oh, okay, uh, this doesn't look right. What did I miss? Hmm. Uh, length. Oh, I put these in the wrong order. 
So this is length, this is angle. So this is length and this is angle. I had the, the length at zero. And maybe I'll just for consistency change the order there. And there we go. So now I really haven't gotten very far, but I've built my segment. Now here's the thing that's different though. What I'm going to do now, this is why I, I, was, I didn't want to, this is why this is quite different. Now what I'm going to do is, let me, let me zoom in on this segment here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I just want this segment to follow the mouse. So wherever I move the mouse, I want it to turn to move towards the mouse. So actually what I want to do is I want it to, uh, I want it to, be, to point at the mouse. So I want it to grab the mouse. This is what I'm going to do. So I want it to grab the mouse. I want it to point at the mouse. So um, how do I do that? So this is yet another example of needing this polar to Cartesian trigonometry stuff. So because uh, I'll have it move according to the mouse. I think this is a good way to start. Um, so if I have this segment, and then the mouse is down over here, what I need to do, what I want to do is turn it so that it points this way, and then move it all the way so that it's here. So, uh, so, that's, so that'll give the sort of motion that we're expecting, I think. Um, so I want it to point at, and then, you know, they're, they're going to be different. One thing, it could be fixed, and it always just points in the sort of tentacle case. But I want it to turn. A bit. So what I need to do is figure out this angle. Oh my goodness, guess what? We've now got to do the, no wonder this is inverse kinematics. We also have to do the inverse. We're not converting from polar to Cartesian. We now have to convert from Cartesian to polar. Because what I need is I need this angle based on knowing the, and I think I want to use this endpoint. So actually, I think the angle I want is this, right? Or is it from A? I don't know what the, somebody, will, somebody in the chat will tell me. Because I could calculate an angle of it pointing from B or from A. I think I want it from A. I think I want it to turn and go there. So I want to, sorry. So what I want to do is calculate this angle. And what is that angle? It's this dy and this dx. So it's mouse x minus this object's a dot x and mouse y. So that's those. But if I have those, how do I get the angle? Now here's the thing. I should do another video about this because I can use something called arc tangent or inverse tangent. It's a trigonometry function to get the angle from an x and y value. And there's even a special way to do that with uh, code functions. There's something called a tan 2. Somebody remind me to do a separate video about that. But I'm going to do this just with vectors. Because uh, the, p ve the p vector object does this behind the scenes. If I can create a vector that points from here to here, then I can call a function in the p processing vector object called heading. And that heading function gives me this angle. It's, if you, we look at the source code, it's got a tan 2 in it. So it's doing this. But I might as well have a function that does this math for me already. Let's just use that. OK, so now I come back over here. Oh, hello. Hello, inverse kinematic thing. And, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function that calls segment.follow uh, mouse x mouse y. Okay? So I want this segment to follow the mouse. So I'm going to go here into segment and say void follow. And I get a target x. And let me just call that tx and ty for like target x, target y. Probably should use the full word target. I'm trying to keep my code within the space that you can see. And so now what I need is I need a vector, the direction, which points from, um, so here's the thing. I could do this a number of different ways. I'm going to say uh, target equals a new p vector that's at that tx and ty. And then I'm going to say p vector dot subtract the target minus a. So this is what I want. I want a vector that points from a to the target. That's the direction that I want it to point. And then now what do I do? I say angle equals dr dot, d, d, dot heading. So that's all there is to it. So now if I, uh, if I run this, we can see it's always pointing towards the mouse. So that's just making a vector, getting the angle, and using that angle as it's. That. Here's the thing. What happens now, though, if not only do I point towards the mouse, but I actually move B to the mouse location? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say B equals target 
dot copy. Now this is going to do something weird. Okay, first of all, uh, so actually, I don't want to calculate b. Here's the thing. I, maybe this is a little bit weird what I'm doing here, but I have a function that calculates b based on a. So actually what I want to do, oh, this is actually easier than I thought. What I want to do is, right, what I did is I rotated it to here. I want now this vector to have the magnitude of length. And then I just want a to be positioned where uh, its distance from the target is that length. Does that make sense? I think I need to draw this again. So this is the, uh, this is the segment. This is the target. So the segment goes here. And I have this as a vector. And now I need to figure out where is a so that if I lined it up with here, uh, b would end up right there. Right? So A should be, um, yeah, so, so A should be the, that, ang the, the, that vector position. Uh, go back to where I, I, I lost my I, I got my, I got my words mixed up. I'm trying to, what's the, it's kind of like I want to move B there and then just move back by the angle, but if, uh, if this is the angle, I think what I want to do, I'm trying to think, what's the, what's the most succinct way of doing this? Which is just to shift that vector to where the distance, the magnitude, oh, 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 I know what to do. Ah, here we go. I got it. <laughs> Not till you'll edit this somehow. So all I need to do is take this vector and put it right here, right? Put it right here, then multiply it by negative one, and then I have a vector right like that goes this way, and then A goes right here. So now I want that arm to be positioned at this angle, but where A is there. And there's probably some redundancies in the way that I'm thinking about calculating this, as there always are, but let's just do this. So forget about moving B. What I want to do now is say direction set magnitude to length, right? Then I want to say direction, multiply by negative one. So I want it to be as long as the segment and I want it to move in the other direction because now all I need to do is say A equals P vector add target plus direction. Right? So I want A to be positioned. I'm going to change the angle and then position A that distance away from the target. And now we should see, there we go. So now as I move this, you can see this particular segment is following the mouse in a somewhat lifelike way. Now here's the thing, this is going to get much more exciting, right? This is inverse kinematics in that I'm starting with the thing at the end, but there's nothing connected to it. So now what I need to do is now that I've figured this out, oh this is exciting, ah! <laughs> this is going to be beautiful. You guys are going to make all sorts of wonderful cute and squiggly little snake-like colorful creatures with little antennae. I can't wait to see all of them. Um, right, if I have this now here, and let's just say, for example, it started like this. So this got moved to here. What I need to do is point this now. This one does exactly the same thing that this one did. Aha! This is what inverse kinematics is. This one does exactly the same thing that this one did, but its target is this point. So it points towards it, and then it shifts there. So we're actually done. We've done all of this already. We just need to add a segment that's connected that does the same exact algorithm, but not with the first target, but with what it's attached to. Let's go add that. In. So now here, what if, I add, what if I do the same thing I did before, where I make this segment one, and eventually we need to make this an array or a linked list, whatever we do. And I need to make this segment two. Whoops. Segment two. Okay, segment two. <laughs> hey, I can do this. Segment two equals a new segment. And guess what? Its parent, I'm thinking of it in the inverse way, its parent is the thing at the end, is segment one. And it has a length of 100. I don't know if it really needs an initial angle, the way this stuff is going to get calculated, but let's leave that in there. This might be completely unnecessary in this scenario. So now I need to write another constructor function, just like this one. I need to give them all 
a parent, and I'm, instead of getting an X and a Y, it's going to get a parent. And then, uh, so here, parent is always null if it's the first one. I'm going to have the same issue. I'm going to need the child thing to go, but maybe I can go forwards this time. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Um, then what I'm going to do is say, oh, I'm almost there. Uh, parent is that parent. And then A is, oh, wait a sec. We don't actually, it doesn't really matter where A is because what I need to do now is just follow the parent. So I want to follow, um, I want to follow parents A and this should A, uh, right? I want to just do that algorithm. And uh, I better set my length and angle before I do that, right? So the first thing I do is just attach myself to it wherever it is. And then um, here, mm, yeah, so this should be good. I, I can see that this is really going to need to be refactored, <laughs> but I'm going to just keep it right now. So now what I want to do, this is, is kind of terrible what I'm doing, but I'm going to say segment one update. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's just make sure they're both there. Segment two, update and show. Okay, what did I get here? Uh, target parent a dot x, oh, 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 no? Hold on, I got a null pointer exception. What's wrong here? Um, <laughs> new segment, segment one follow, okay, hold on, let's, that I should definitely get, why am I getting a null pointer in follow? Is it when I, it's up here, oh, cause, does, does, uh, uh, hold on, T time out for a second. And where's my debugging music? Do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> if the child follows the mouse, the parent follows the child. You know, the child follows the parent. Uh, where's my, let me, where's my null pointer exception? Uh, this right here, right? So that's, let, let's, hold on, let's not do any of this. Okay, this is what it was before. Now, uh, let's put this back. No pointer, is it target or is it A? Oh, A doesn't have a, of course, of course, of course. Okay, I, this will get edited back. Let me just. No pointer exception. No pointer exception, could it be target or could it be A? It's definitely A, right? Because I'm forgetting that it doesn't have an A. <laughs> so even though it's parent is parent, it's A should at least start um, somewhere and uh, I guess I'm just going to give it, um, I'm going to give it uh, just a vector at zero, zero. I got to think about this. This is not right, but let's just do this for a second. So, yeah. Hold on. Let me think about this here. Uh, I lost, I, lo I lost it. I had it and I lost it. Uh, maybe this isn't the right idea. Oh, it's not following A, yeah. No, hold on. Let's think about this. I should still, I know what the issue is. I, I, let me come back to this. I know what the problem is. <laughs> I've got it. Let me go back to that null pointer exception. Uh, Why did I change that? When did I lose that by accident? Okay. Okay, so here we go. 
Okay, I've got a null pointer exception with target and A. So a, which target is not null, because I can see that I made it right here. A is null. And why is A null? Because I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> and and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm setting the parent because I know it needs to be attached. But even though I'm doing inverse kinematics, I don't want, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this incorrectly. What I want to do is, this is still the root, the first segment. It's going to be a lot easier if I then attach the next segment here, attach the next segment here. I am going to do the math backwards by starting with the last one, but they need to have some initial configuration that makes sense. So when I make the next one, it ha its parent is actually the thing behind it still. So that's what, I, that's what I'm doing wrong here. So let me come back, and I, it's just about the way that I'm building it. So this is actually not in front of it. This is not behind it, it's actually in front of it. So let's, let's do that. And segment two is actually the thing that's gonna follow the mouse, if you, if you catch my drift. <laughs> so hold on a second. So what I'm gonna do when I make that thing from the parent, A is still uh, located, it's at the end, segment two is at the end of segment one. So segment two's A location gets the B location from segment one. So that's fine. And forget about this follow thing. That's not happening here. So what I'm going to do now is let's just make sure that these both show themselves in the right location. Get rid of this follow. Okay, so those, okay, well it looks like there's a segment up here. Why is that? Because uh, 300, 200 segment, um, so let's see, oh, so let's see here. What went wrong there? I'm, uh, Ah, so the first segment didn't get its B calculated in setup, in its constructor, so, so that messed up the second one. And in that sense, I should probably calculate its B here. So, whoops. So there, so now they're connected, and we can just, we know that this is correct, even though I think the initial angle isn't really gonna matter here, um, if I were to give it a, you know, an angle of same thing like negative 45 degree radians and just so we can see, you know, negative uh, 10 degrees. So we can see this is now these segments are connected. 45 degrees and then 10 degrees. Okay, because here's the thing, it's segment two. The whole point of this is that I want the end to follow the mouse. By the way, the parent thing is gonna work so much better here. I start at the end and I just go back through the parents. I don't actually need the child like I needed in the forward one. Okay, so now we can see segment two is following the mouse, but segment one is not coming along with it. So what do I need to do? I could just say segment one follow segment two's a dot x, segment two a dot y. And now we're gonna see this. There we go. We can see now I have this inverse kinematics where it's all about the other, figuring out where the end is and the, the angles get calculated kind of rippling back. The first one follows the mouse, the second one follows the end of one, and you can see, now this, this, is, it, this is kind of, feels somewhat like a realistic skeleton arm-like thing. And of course, there's scale and what you're using this for, but we've got the basic idea. Oh, good. <laughs> so now, what I want to do is I want to add, hmm, I want to make this, uh, um, I, I don't want to just have two separate variables. So once again, I'm going to call this tentacle or snake or whatever, I'm going to call it tentacle. And tentacle is a new first segment. Then I'm going to say, I'm just gonna make, just for simplicity, I'm just gonna have three, I'm gonna add three. And the same kind of thing I did before, where what I wanna do is I need, the current segment is, starts with tentacle. The next segment is attached to that tentacle. And let's just give them all an initial angle of zero. Again, that makes just things a lot simpler. And then next, current is next. So once again, I'm making a linked list where I'm saying the first object is connected to the next object, which is connected to the next object. So I, to iterate them, I could just go through them. And, but yeah. So, um, but I'm actually connecting them backwards, which is perfect. This is all perfect, yay! Okay, uh, so see, make the next one based on that, and then current becomes next. And this should not say tentacle here. That's a mistake. This should say current, right? Because current is changing. Next is based on current, then next becomes current. So now I should be able to do the thing that I was hoping for where I say, 
uh, for, no, no, no. I, I make, a, I say, just say current or next, I don't know. Next equals tentacle, while next is not equal to null. Next, let's not do the follow for a second. Next.update, next.show. And then, oh. <laughs> one day. And then, <laughs> um, next equals tentacle.parent. Oh, I see what the problem is. Oops, and that's not a function. So this is a problem. Why is this a problem? This won't work. Oh, I, was, I thought it was going to work out so beautifully. I need the last one. <laughs> I need to start from the last one. I, I don't know why I'm spending all this effort avoiding putting them into an array. Because if I just put them into an array, I have the end, I have the beginning. But since I'm spending all this effort avoiding them putting them into an array, I'm going to say, I'm actually going to say, um, I'm going to do this. This is crazy. Current is just this first one, right? I don't need to keep track of anything. The tentacle is actually whenever this finishes, it's whatever was current, tentacle, right? So I don't actually want to save the first one in my variable. I want to save the last one because I want to start at the end and go backwards, okay? So now I can say next is that tentacle and then get the parent. So I'm going backwards. So this should show all of them. It didn't. Uh, why didn't it? Uh, 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 hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Why didn't it? What's wrong? Next is tentacle. Well, next is not equal to null. I should at least see the last one, right? Um, so hold on. Let's take out this. So just to see one. Why don't I see the last one? Let me make them a little shorter, just to be sure it's not going off the screen. Ah, the last one is there. Ah, okay, so I had this right. The last one is there. But if I put this in, This doesn't work. While next is not equal to null. Well, next is not equal to null. Update. Oh, maybe the update is messing things up. Let's do this. Ooh, what's going? What's what's happening? Do I have an infinite loop? <laughs> I'm like looking to the chat. Someone's going to have the answer for me. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, there's a question in the chat. Why do developers always call variables weird, obfuscated names? And I really try not to do that, and I'm doing a kind of a terrible job of it right now. So that's a really good comment. And maybe when I go and, and rewrite this code to post it, I can fix up the names. Next equals current. Next, oh, this is totally wrong. Next equals next.parent. Of course. So this is what's wrong. <laughs> this, the whole point of this idea of a linked list kind of system is that, let me run this again. There we go. I was saying next equals tentacles got there. So I was always saying next is the first one. So I was stuck in a kind of infinite loop there. So I want to show it and then get its parent. Then show it and get its parent. And now if I call update, that will shouldn't do anything because update is just calculating the end. And now what happens if I have the, this one uh, follow uh, mouse x mouse y? So you can see that one's working. That last one, but I need now, I need to do some kind of following here. So I'm going to say next.follow, and it should follow the, uh, it has to follow the, if, the previous one. So what I can do is, oh, uh, this is why having an array would be nice, or having the child, all I need is the child relationship, because it's got to follow its, Child. So let's put that back in. <laughs> let's, <laughs> so maybe I do like this double legged list thing. I, I'm really over engineering this, I think. Uh, but I'm going to give them, give it a child. Uh, and then so I have that reference. So what, what do I do here? When I make them, the next one is based on the previous one. And then, uh, um, 
Oh, just give me a second here. I have to take a break for a second. Do I, I, my, my fighting against putting an array in this is just sort of like a lost, pointless cause. Um, and it's time for lunch. Can you tell that it's time for lunch? I've got no water, got no caffeine, no food, sugar. I need something to like go into my brain to like to recharge. I need electric, electrical outlets clicked in here. But what I want to do is I think I'll, if I put the the end things parent is the previous is end things is the parent. So that's why I'm iterating through. But the parent has to follow its own child, and the last one follows the mouse. So. This sets current as the parent of next. Uh, right, next, next parent is current. Next. <laughs> oh no, 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 because I'm going, I see I, inverse thing is really confusing. Next parent is current. And current child is next. Yeah. Okay. Mathieu, this will be like a little edit point here. <laughs> what I need to do, right, right now I have the relationship that every segment knows its parent. But in this inverse kinematics, it's got to follow the one that's in front of it, which is actually its child. So right now, the way that I'm creating them is that the, the, um, the next object's parent is current, but the current object's child is next. So I also need to say current.child equals next. And then here I can say follow, right? So the first one just follows its, its mouse, follows the mouse. And then, um, and then what I might do actually is say next equals next.parent, just to go to the next one. And then at the beginning here, I should call next.follow. So if I give it follow with a particular target, it'll follow that. But I need another follow function. I can overload functions, right? I want the same. Oh, but I don't want to redo this math. All I need to do is say um, void. If I just call follow, then what I need is Target x is child dot, it follows the a, child dot a dot x, right? It's going to follow its, uh, and target y is child dot a dot y, and then follow target x, target y. So this is a uh, target x, target y. So this is kind of an interesting technique that I'm doing, which is I have that follow algorithm where this segment can follow any arbitrary point. And then what I realize is, oh, what I want it to do is follow its child's point A. So rather than write a whole other function that does this in a different way, I can just write another function that calls this one with the that, that particular child's x and y. So this is the two functions both named follow. If I just say follow without any arguments, it follows its child. If I say follow with arguments, it'll follow that. So now, if I go back to here, I should be, the first one is following the mouse. And actually, this is silly what I'm doing. I should just say, uh, this will be tentacle. Tentacle follow the mouse, right? We know the end, the tentacle object is the end of this whole tentacle thing. Then next is going backwards, whatever the tentacle's parent is. And then, and so this is a segment. And now I have my loop. As long as there is something there, follow its child, update, and show. And now we should have, wait, well, hold on, hold on. Ah, whoops. I forgot to say that next equals next dot parent. So I've got to keep going, right? I've got to go on to the next one. Otherwise, I got an infinite loop stuck there again. So now we can see it's doing that, right? We can see that it's, this whole thing is following the mouse. Oh, you know what? It's a little bit off. Am I not draw? Oh, I'm not drawing the tentacle. <laughs> because the, everything is shown in that loop, I also have to, I'm kind of, I have to show the tent, the, that front element. Whoa, what did I do here? Ah, uh, 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 that's crazy. What's the bug? What's this bug? I've got a weird mistake. That's really weird. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Get rid of this for a second. Let's just get rid of this entirely. Okay, hold on, let me delete all this down here. What is this bug? Let's get rid of this entirely. Okay, whoa, something as weird is happening with this tentacle. Because I forgot to call update. That's what it is. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, this is, the, again, refactoring is a wonderful thing. <laughs> but I can see this loop, the idea of this loop is to do all the three steps. Follow, update, show. And I did follow and show, but I forgot to update it. What happens in update? It's kind of important. It recalculates the endpoint, which is also silly now, by the way, that I have an update function that that's all it does. I thought it might need to do some other stuff. <laughs> so, but I guess it's good in there in case it needs to do some other stuff. So I need to say tentacle.update. Uh, there we go. And now, there we go. So now I have this thing that follows the mouse in kind of like a real, slightly realistic skeletal-like way. And what I can do now is I could say, hey, guess what? I want to have 10 of these connected. Um, I want to uh, have the first one. Uh, and I want them to all, and again, these should all be variables. I should, uh, I want them to be separated by only 10 pixels and have 20 of them connected. And you can see, what do I have now? You know, I have something that looks like this. And you can see this is different, by the way, than a particle that keeps track of its own path, right? There is an aspect of it kind of keeping track of its own path, but it's actually, you know, in a way, more like a rigid body of connected uh, joints. So, um, so there's a lot of possible ways you can vary this. And just thinking about it, this is why I think we could maybe get a nice fish simulation, especially if there was some added wiggle to it. There's a sort of almost like the muscles where all those joints are and that they that they trigger and maybe there's some sine wave oscillation also as it's moving. So this is what I want to maybe try to do in a next a sort of second part. I don't know if I'm going to edit this into many parts, what part I'm on. But, um, but that's something to think about. Now, I think it would be worth, just out of curiosity, let's try adding that um, thick, thickness, stroke weight thing to it. So it could be useful for every segment. And I don't need the angle. So I'm going to reuse the angle. I mean, instead of having the angle, the angle could just default to zero because it's just being calculated. Um, so I'm going to have all of them have a default angle of zero. And I'm going to make this last thing uh, pass its index into the array. Because what I can do with that number, I have each segment knowing whether it's zero, one, two, three, four, whatever it is in the total number of segments. And so what I can do is, for example, if I wanted to have stroke weight as a variable, and whenever I draw it, that's, it's drawn with a variable stroke weight. You know, if I were to just say right now, and I hate that I have to do this in two places. So this is something I really need to refactor. <laughs> um, stroke weight equals like a random number between one and 10. And I'm doing this in two places, which is terrible. And I don't need angle anymore. You can see they all have like a random stroke weight. But what if I want to say, um, and uh, I want to map the index, which goes from zero to the total number of segments, which in this case is 20, uh, zero to 20, uh, and I want the stroke weight to go between one and 10. So I know this is terrible, but I'm just gonna put these in both places. Now we can see it's thicker at the end, uh, uh, closer to the mouth, and thinner, thinner, <laughs> thinner. Uh, as it gets further to the back. So you can see that's a nice little variation. I could, I could also alter its color based on the same exact um, algorithm. We've got this kind of eel-like thing that we could start to work with in our sketch. Now something I thought about here, something came into my head. Ah, yes, here's an exercise for you. Really, to me, this looks like one thing now. But really what it is is a collection of segment objects. But really what I would like to do, what I would want to do is make you know, I'll call it like snake, for example. I would make a class called snake, right, that has all of that code for one of them, and then I could have a bunch of them. So that, that would be a good part two or three or four or whatever this, in addition to trying to get it. So, so maybe we'll do that. Maybe what I'll do eventually is make the, uh, make, put that into an object so I can have more than one, and then also put those into a system where they interact with each other in some way. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching this inverse kinematics. I hope you got something from it and that you'll look at the code and make some variations and make pretty sparkly rainbow antennae cute uh, snake tentacly creatures. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, Okay.
It's 1.20. I'm definitely finished for this morning session, which has now been two hours and 45 minutes. I need some water. There's a mirage over there. Um, actually, you know what I didn't do? Uh, here's the thing. I'm going to, hold on. How, what's the best way to do this? Uh, great, oh, so Alistair writes, be great to see one end of the entire connected tentacle locked and the other's location set by mouse click and then gravity pull the end, then you have string. Yes. You know what, I thought, I'm gonna, when I come back and do some more of this uh, later, um, I'm gonna, uh, up, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually move it not according to the mouse. I don't know why I forgot to show that. I, let, let me, maybe, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, Mathieu, let's see if we can redo the ending to that video. Um, and uh, you can use this or not use this, but I'll mention it. I, I don't know if this can get edited in or not. But So when I look at this snake-like thing, oh, wait, wait, hold on. I already did this here. No, no, don't delete this sketch. Just this tab. When I look at this snake-like thing, I see uh, one object. And in a way, I kind of have that because I just have this one variable called tentacle, which in a way, because it's a linked list, refers to everything. But I really could organize the code in such a way that if I made another class called snake or creature or something, and I could take everything that's basically in setup and draw and put it into that other class. This would allow me to more easily duplicate many of these on the screen. And that's something that I'll, uh, I'd like to do in, in a, maybe the next video. So I will do another one where I have more than one of these and maybe they move in some way. Because what if instead of following the mouse, they follow a bouncing ball or if you look at any of my, just take the flocking example for example. What if instead of having a triangle moving through that flocking example, you have this uh, snake-like wiggly creature thing uh, moving through. So that's, so the, the, there's, there's a couple things I think you could think about doing as an exercise if after watching this. Number one, refactor the code. To have the two constructors, there's some efficiency there. Putting everything that has to do with this one creature into a class so that you can have more than one of those on the screen. And then thinking about those things not following the mouse. So what are those things move independently through some other particular kind of logic? So I hope you will do that. I hope you will make cute and cuddly and rainbow colorful antenna e creatures and share those with me in the comments, at Schiffman on Twitter, uh, by submitting it to the GitHub repository, and all that sort of stuff that people often do when they're watching these videos. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. OK, um, there we go. So I think I did a, a successfully this morning covered forward and inverse kinematics without honestly kind of knowing that much about them. <laughs> I'm pulling from memory and probably like whenever I watched uh, coding, the coding math videos about it, it just sort of seeped into my brain. Um, when did those come out? Um, so now what I would like to do, uh, joint restrictions. Oh, okay. Let me not do that right now because I have to go. <laughs> I don't have my music stuff or whatever. I'm so, um, but what I'm going to do is I will do uh, maybe five minutes of pulling some uh, questions from the chat. Uh, you know, YouTube has this like super chat thing. I'm curious what, but now I'm going to be way off topic and everyone's going to write about it. But I'm curious if people like or are kind of offended by or don't like, offended is the wrong word, like uh, people's opinions about the super chat. I have a different way of kind of organizing a smaller community, which is having a Patreon, which has a separate Slack chat, which is in many ways like the super chat, the monthly subscription type thing. But anyway, sorry, I got off topic. Um, weak example of inverse kinematics, lock, lock the endpoint. Yes. Well, I absolutely should do that. But does that really make it weak? I feel like it's a nice example of inverse kinematics. It just doesn't have that feature yet. I, I could do that. I'll do that next. <laughs> um, yeah, I could do that as a third part of the video. Um, have you ever used Eclipse for Java? What do you think about it? Uh, can we get Coding Train t-shirts online? Yes, uh, codingtrain.storeenvy.com. I just mentioned that at the earlier, at the earlier in the uh, 
I'll show that again before I leave. Have you ever used Eclipse for Java and what do you think about it? Yes, I love Eclipse for Java because that's how kind of like one of the first things. I, I, don't, I don't know that you should, but I'm, I do a lot of my Java development in Eclipse and particularly anything that I'm doing for as a processing library or checking a bug in processing. And that's really on my list to get to, especially I want to talk about Google Summer of Code. And I want to do some videos about how to work with processing in Eclipse, which is maybe a skill that would be helpful in working on Google Summer of Code projects for processing. Do you have dreams of what you could do with code or ideals of how programming could change the world to the better? Um, are you a professor at NYU? Let me try those. I, and there's an Android question. I don't know anything about Android. Um, so do I have dreams? You know, I guess my point of view on this is to do this channel and try to show people a side of creativity and fun through code, which I think is a side that exists in other places too. I don't have, you know, I don't have ownership over that idea by any means, by any, but anywhere close to any stretch of the imagination. But, uh, and to put the question out there uh, through my tutorials of how can we do things with code that make the world a better place. Um, and so I guess my way of doing that is to make code more accessible uh, and thinking about code and learning code more accessible to a broader audience. Now, whether YouTube with ads and a Patreon is the best way of doing that is an open question for me. This is an experiment. I'm really enjoying this experiment. Uh, it is uh, really exciting to see the audience grow and the community grow. So that has definitely been something that I feel excited and happy about, but it's still, I still wonder, am I doing a good thing through this? But by putting this knowledge out there and asking people to contribute and, and make stuff with it and hopefully make the world a better place. That's what I'm, that's kind of my point of view. There was a question about the shirts and I forgot. <laughs> there was another question, oh, am I a professor at NYU? Yes, I guess. <laughs> um, no, I do teach full time at NYU a program called ITP, itp.nyu.edu. It's a wonderful place. I love everybody that I work with. The students are terrific. And I, um, I do these videos for my classes and then also put them on YouTube. Um, do I want to fly into space? Uh, thank you. People are giving me nice views. Oh wait, okay. There's a question in the Slack channel now. How would a force like wind affect a jointed object like you just built since you would need to affect all the segments somehow rather than just the end? This is such a good question. Oh, boy, that would make a great coding challenge. So number one is I think that this you know, I'm always all walking this line of, should I use a physics engine or should I just implement the math in my code? And what I did right now was I didn't use a physics engine at all. But I could potentially use something like Box2D and just make bodies that are connected through revolute joints, which is essentially gonna have the exact behavior of this um, inverse kinematics. And then what I could do is apply forces and then the physics engine is gonna work all this out. <laughs> but let's say I wanted to do this myself uh, I guess I would probably use the same iterative approach. So the endpoint would be moved and the others would follow it and those would be, it's tricky. So I have to understand, I have to decide do, you know, how the forces interact with each other. But um, I really would still build on that rippling effect. So if the, uh, and this is I think how we could maybe also, if you think about muscles, this is what I want to explore, like how does a fish propel itself? Right? It's not just because it's, head is moving and suddenly that causes its skeleton to do that wiggling thing. So I think what I would need to do is apply the force and then recalculate, then apply the force to the next segment and recalculate, apply the force to the next segment, something like that. Somebody in the chat I'm sure will have a better idea. Um, oh, that's wonderful. Somebody said they showed their 13 year old uh, brother some of the videos and now they're coding. Is coding train work or a hobby? Maybe both. I consider what I'm doing with this in a, a number of different ways. Uh, it was definitely both work, I would say it's more work than a hobby. I mean, it's definitely started as a hobby. Or I don't know if hobby is the right word, as an experiment or something to do for fun. Now I feel a sort of obligation to it, which is good and bad. But I consider this my uh, research, a research component of my job um, in experimental uses of education. I also consider it a side, side project, side business in a way. Uh, I mean, um, so I would say it's a little bit of, uh, and also one of the things that I really do care about is the Processing Foundation, which is a non-for-profit organization dedicated to um, uh, making code uh, ex more accessible and inclusive through a lot of the tools we develop, uh, and also thinking about art with code through processing in P5.js, and I view this cha channel also as some evangelism for that project. 
um, and to get more people involved and excited about it. Um, for a fish, the muscles would move first, and as a result, the whole body moves. It's not like the head is moving and the body follows. Exactly, that's a very good point. There's some great fish simulation uh, that actually do like fluid simulation stuff. I don't think that's exactly what I, I want to go down that road right now, but fish simulation. I saw when I Googled this at some point, ooh, Roblox. Oh my God. Ooh, <laughs> okay, now I'm off topic. I gotta do some Roblox videos, don't I? Um, Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, there's a Pixar in a box video on Khan Academy about the about like finding Nemo and fish moving. That would be great. Okay, a uh, one more question. Can you please tell how we can as a programmer can approach to a project on the solo basis? Also, have you made mobile apps with processing? Those are two different questions. I have not really done a lot of mobile apps with processing. I have sort of taught and shown demos of processing with Android. So you can use processing with Android. And P5.js is something you can do um, with, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, oh, P5.js because it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, you can just, you can make a mobile app just through web technologies and, and you can just open it in the browser on a mobile device or you can use something called Cordova to actually turn it into an app. Um, approaches to a simple Raycaster, videos with Eclipse, these are all great ideas. Um, approaches to projects as a solo programmer, I would say, hey, first of all, why be a solo programmer? Find a community. I mean, I know this is not easy and, and hard for people depending on their circumstances, but to the extent that you can find an online community, a meetup, uh, uh, what class you can take, uh, collaborators, I think that's always an exciting and great way to work. Uh, it's, it's hard to program as a solo program, but I would say one of the things that I find really helpful, and actually doing this channel forces me to do it, albeit often in an incredibly embarrassing fa in fashion, is when you have to talk through something that you're making, it slows you down to the point that often bugs and problems that you couldn't solve, you're able to solve. So I get this all the time where a student couldn't figure something out and just through asking the question, like they write an email with the question and five minutes later I get an email, oh never mind, I figured it out. Or you know, talking it through in, a, in an office hours kind of appointment. So one thing I would say if you're solo, find a friend or somebody, a family member um, to try to explain what you're doing even in a higher level conceptual way and that can be um, good. Um, okay, so uh, since some people had asked, um, if you're interested I, in some of the Coding Train merchandise, uh, I have codingtrain.storeenvy.com. Um, this is a really a work in progress. I'll try to add more stuff as people request it here, um, that type of thing. Uh, and then the other thing I'll mention is, what, where was that? Um, what was that YouTube video I showed? Fish swimming Windows desktop or something? YouTube, uh, YouTube, I Googled it and found it. Uh, this is it. So if anybody, I know I'm not, I haven't posted my code. I can try to like just dump it in drop docs and so tweet at me or I'll post it in Slack channel. But um, I would love, can what I've built so far lead to something like this? So how do we make something like this? Because I would love to combine this with like my flocking and steering behavior stuff. So, oh, rubber duck debugging, yes. So that's the rubber duck concept. I need a rubber ducky. I have, so, by the way, I have, a, I have a bin full of rubber duckies at home. And unless you think that's weird, first of all, I think it's okay. Anybody can have a bin of rubber duckies at home and it's not weird. We should have coding train rubber duckies. That is a great idea, um, right? Um, rubber duck debugging is like a nice and friendly open kind of concept, right? So there's nothing like mean spirited about it. So that's why rubber duck, I think of it as you, if you had to explain it to the rubber duck, then suddenly you're gonna understand it yourself. So I guess you could just get a rubber duck. It's nicer if it's a human being, as nice as rubber duckies are. Anyway, um, and so that was one thing. So that's what I would love. I would like to come back today. It's gonna be, t it's already 1.30. Four, five, six o'clock for like another hour. I really wanna do that waving flag thing as I have a good, I'm gonna, I'm gonna present to you something that, I, that is now known forever as the uni kitty. Just think, think about that. What could a uni kitty be? That's very exciting. That's what's gonna be on this evening. <laughs> um, and, oh, Jiraj is asking what I programmed today. Let's just quickly, I programmed a bunch of things. And uh, oh, I also should add the thing where the endpoint is fixed. So we were making some inverse kinematic tentacly stuff. Um, so I wanna do, I wanna maybe fix the endpoint, make a swimming fish and a waving flag uni kitty 
and show processing eclipse. That's something we're gonna happen today. So I wanna see if I can do some of those things later today. So I would like from you, the community, I think the only thing that I need is, well, if you, uh, um, is anybody to see if you can make something like that fish thing and give me some tips on it. And maybe don't give me the answer, but some tips and ideas. You can give me the answer if you want. I'll just, I'll give you credit, obviously. But um, I wanna try to make that when I come back. Okay, I gotta go. Uh, thank you all for watching. I've got no music, I've got nothing, I'm all, uh, I, don't have, uh, I do have a train whistle and a bell and a couple of different mugs. Got some t-shirts, oh, random numbers. I've got to go. Thank you all for watching. It's, this has been three hours. The camera just went off. Um, so I'll see you all later today. I'm doing now for some reason every Friday I'm doing this twice. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry that the time is not good for everyone. I, got, I, I don't know what to do about that. I wish there was a way to just make a time for these live streams that works for everybody across the world. Uh, okay. I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to